Houston. After an 11 inning marathon in game two, the Tennessee Balls and Texas Longhorns ready to rumble. And welcome back to the ballpark. Wow, what a game two. LSU with a walk-off home run. I'm Brett Dolan with Pat Combs. Delighted to have you with us. And you talk about contrast in styles. I'm not sure we could have a better one with the offense of Tennessee. Man, you think about this team hitting 372 coming into the day. Led by third baseman Jake Lipscomb, batting 533 with five home runs, 22 RBI in only eight games. Then you throw in Drew Gilbert, Luke Lipsius, and Jarrell Ortega, each batting over 400. Brett, this team is full of offense. Indeed they are, and they're gonna face the Texas team. It's all about pitching and defense. I'm not sure there's a better or deeper staff than what the Longhorns could run out. Yeah, might be the best pitching staff in college baseball. You know, sporting a .067 earned run average coming into today. You're led by Tristan Stevens, Pete Hansen, uh, Tanner Witt, by far might be the best college weekend rotation we're going to see this weekend. But the bullpen is also full of some great arms. <laughs> yeah, pretty good, too. <laughs> we're going to see a lot of orange in the building tonight. The Tennessee Volunteers, the Texas Longhorns, our starting lineup for Game 3, straight ahead from Minute Maid Park. Spring training is back in the Palm Beaches this spring. Experience Astros baseball, plus the best beaches, dining, and entertainment after the game. There's nothing better than Astros spring ball in sunny Florida. For tickets and more, visit astros.com slash spring to book your trip. Plan your visit now to the spring training home of the Houston Astros. The Palm Beaches. Step up to the plate and join the official kids club of the Houston Astros presented by HEB. <laughs> Children 12 and under will receive four tickets to a select Astros game, a jersey, drawstring bag, a hat and lanyard, as well as the opportunity to be selected for exclusive events during the year. All for only $30. You can become a Buddies member today by visiting Astros.com slash Buddies. Big moments. The best fans. Feel the excitement and don't miss a moment. Astros 2022 season tickets are on sale now. Astros.com slash season tickets. It's number one, Texas, at number six, Tennessee. And here's the volunteer starting lineups brought to you by Auto Nation. This is a team that leads the country in runs per game at 15 plus in total runs and doubles and home runs. Stevenson, Lipsius, and back minutes Gilbert, Lipscomb, and Ortega, Dickie Russell, and Lawson round out the starting nine for the volunteers out of the SEC. And on the hill tonight for the Texas Longhorns is Pete Hansen. If you look at uh, Pete Hansen's numbers, stellar start to the season, 6'2", 205-pound redshirt sophomore at El Dorado Hills, California. You know, Brett, very polished left-handed pitcher and not overpowering. His fastball sent the upper 80s, but this guy can flat pitch, has great command of his curveball, a plus changeup. I think the best thing David Pierce says about him is he just competes in the strike zone and loves to force early contact. Fantastic start for this pitching staff in this Texas Longhorns team. They've outscored their opponents 72 to 10. Meanwhile, Tennessee again, the best offense by far. And as we mentioned earlier, it's that unmovable object, the irresistible force. What's going to give today? The hitting of Tennessee exactly. and the pitching of Texas. Something has to give for these undefeated teams. And what a nightcap uh, to this thrilling day. A couple of one-run ball games and walk-off fashion win for LSU in extra innings. And then the Baylor 2-1 to one win over UCLA to start the day. And, Brett, I know we're starting a little late, but, man, we've seen some great baseball already. We have indeed. Roof open, game three. 
Seth Stevenson ready and we're underway. Last time this Texas Longhorns team lost, it was to the Texas X's in the alumni game, eight to six. <laughs> They've run the table since. And they have, and coming off a of college World Series appearance, and didn't lose much off of last year's team, and that's why uh, they have been preseason ranked number one, and they have shown well in this 2022 campaign so far. 50 wins a year ago. Finished third in the College World Series, and the pitching led the nation in earned run average. It was sub three. They led the nation by a quarter of a run. It's the best since 2014. And happy to have Pete Hansen back. And he'll get the rate of the miss from Stevenson to begin the game. And there's the slider down in the zone. Really tight spin. You can see the dot on the back of the baseball, and Stevenson doesn't pick it up either. Here's Luke Lipsius. He's had 18 at bats, eight hits on a homer, and knocked in five. To say Tennessee has overwhelmed their opponents this year might be an understatement. They took out. Iona 29 to nothing the next day 12 to 2 they had a lower scoring win earlier this week against East Tennessee a 4-1 victory anxious to test themselves this weekend starting with the number one team in the nation how's that for hitting the road here's the test right and against this uh, vaunted Texas pitching staff and you know you always wonder how a team will come out of the gate handle the high expectations of pre preseason number one ranking here for the horns and you know, they have done kind of like the old style Texas teams of the past. When you think of Cliss Gust Gustafson and Augie Garrido and scratching out runs offensively, but the pitching has always been stellar. And this is the same type of a Texas team as uh, you've seen in those former College World Series type teams. Strike three called to Lipsius. Stevenson went down swinging. Lipsius goes down looking. A couple of Ks for Pete Hanson. You know, already a great start to Hanson. You can see the repertoire. He's Shown all three of his pitches early. And you get calls like that a couple of pit, a couple of inches off the plate. It's going to be a long night for these volunteer hitters. Really, we've seen great pitching in both games. I know you look at the final with LSU walking off Oklahoma in the 11 innings on the home run, but pitchers dominated for seven plus. Well, the starting pitching today has been outstanding and. Each of the four staffs that we've seen so far. Jordan Beck, the batter, he's hit three home runs of this year. 345 average facing Pete Hansen. Just nibbling on that outside corner and not getting the call. That pitch may be down a tad, but talk about the command of Pete Hansen, and you'll see the fastball both sides of the plate. Not afraid to come in on right handers. Yeah, command guy who really does pound the zone. This is there. Do you change up that mindset at all when you're going up against a team that has feasted on scoring runs and hitting home? No, I think the mindset is you work ahead of hitters and you always get into the plus column when you do that. You tend to lower batting averages when you get out ahead of the count 0102 and that's got to be the mindset of any pitcher. You tow it up and you pound the zone and let your defense work for you. 3-0 pitch in there for a strike. A plate umpire tonight is Michael Durantis. Just underway in game three. Four and a half out or game two. Push the start time back a little bit. That one's lined just off the tip of the glove of Faltini. Texas fans have become so accustomed to seeing Faltini make great plays and just couldn't quite get there. And Jordan Beck has the game's first hit. And that ball was hammered off the bat of Beck and of course sitting on the three one fastball he gets it. And Hanson challenging him kind of middle in. Good thing the ball was down in the zone a bit and that ball just gets by the glove of Faltini. Pete Anson had six scoreless innings against Rice in the opener. Five scoreless against Alabama, giving up just four hits while striking out eight in his last start. Here's Drew Gilbert. 
And a strikeout to walk ratio of 16 to 2. That works. Gilbert deposits one out towards left center. It'll drop for a base hit. Beck is going to try to go to third. The throw is not in time. It kicks up off the railing. Here comes Beck trying to score. And he's going to be out. Two at the top of the first. Jordan Beck got greedy. He throws up his hands as if to say, I thought I was supposed to go. And out of all that, the Longhorns end the inning. Yeah, great backup on the mound by Pete Hansen. He was exactly where he needed to be. Picks that ball up off the screen of the dugout. Makes a perfect throw to Silas Hardwan. And Texas out of the trouble. They're coming up to hit. This is you, right? Like You're like, mm, bacon, bacon, bacon. Well, this is you. Oh, I love bacon. Sonic Bacon on Bacon Quarter Pound Double Cheeseburger. Okay, you got me. <laughs> oh. I want to beat cancer. I'm going to beat it. That's no doubt in my mind. I'm going to win this battle. Defeating cancer will take all of us. Join our team to help fund game-changing research that saves lives. At the V Foundation, V is for victory over cancer. V is for victory over the odds. V is for victory over health disparities. Victory over setbacks. Victory over the unknown. V is for victory over giving up. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Join our team to help save lives. Cancer can take away all my physical abilities. It cannot touch my mind. It cannot touch my heart, and it cannot touch my soul. 100% of donations fund game-changing cancer research. Donate now at V.org. Take your favorite teams with you with the brand-new AT&T Sportsnet mobile app. Just download the free app from iTunes or Google Play, log in with your TV provider account info, and you're all set. Don't wait. Download the new and improved AT&T Sportsnet mobile app today. Umpires reviewed that play at the plate, Pat, and I believe they're going to confirm the out, but at first blush, you, for a second, you almost thought he went under this tag. It looked like he kicked that glove. Yeah, just barely with his toe. Looked like uh, did Drew Gilbert or Jordan Beck make it, and uh, yeah, it looks like they, uh, they are going to uphold the call. I wasn't sure if the challenge came from the dugout of Tennessee, but the umpires can choose to challenge their own call, and not sure where it came from, but they will uphold the call, and it is confirmed. Tennessee did challenge that call, so they lose the challenge here in the first inning. So we're off and rolling here in game two. A couple of base hits for the Tennessee Volunteers. They lose a runner at the plate to end the top of the first. We we'll talk a lot about Tennessee and their offense. Pitching-wise, they're dealing with a pretty big injury as well in Blade Tidwell. So... They'll send Chase Burns out there tonight. This is the lineup he is going to face for the Texas Longhorns. Brought to you by Texas Crown Club Whiskey. Douglas Hodo III leads off, and it's Eric Kennedy. Ivan Melendez, Mitchell Daly, the cleanup hitter. Silas Arjuan will catch in bat fifth. Murphy Staley is the DH. Skyler Messenger at third base, the Kansas transfer. Trey Faltini at short, and Austin Todd in right field, batting ninth. And here's a look at the Outstanding young arm of Chase Burns. Yeah, good look at the freshman from Gallatin, Tennessee, 6'4", 205. That's an electric arm. Fastball mid-90s. He's touched 100. Got a plus curveball. Cut fastball. And uh, no doubt Burns has major league stuff. The challenge for him has been staying within himself, not overthrowing the fastball. He'll have a tendency to elevate the fastball when he tries to th throw too hard and so if he can just stay within himself tonight, keep that ball down in the zone. He's got a nice loose arm and goes out of that three-four, three-quarter slot. And he is a big-time prospect. Brett, you mentioned it losing Blade Tidwell. That's a, a big story we'll huge. come back to, but that was a huge loss for the Vols. So what did this force Burns to do? A step up into that Friday night roll. And obviously this Tennessee offense can score a lot of runs to give him a little bit of leeway. That'll be tested tonight. Sure will. You hate to throw a freshman out there in the Friday night start, but Chase Burns has 
shown the ability stuff wise to handle it. Oh. If he can just be calm in the moment, right? That's what you got to do. Absolutely. <laughs> Deep breaths and get back in that zone. Douglas Hodo the third is the Longhorns leadoff banner. Sharply on the ground to Shorts. Right to Lawson. One out. Good start for Burns. One of the keys for this Texas Longhorn offense is Douglas Hodo getting on base. He can absolutely fly. And Burns retires Hodo. This is a Texas team. They do have some power, including Melendez on deck. Really not part of their DNA. Dish fault, maybe not the most home run friendly ballpark. But Pat, their formula is a great one. In fact, last year they led the nation in walks. And then you throw on a ridiculous number of hit by pitches. They find ways to get guys on base. They do, and they move around too. They're not afraid to bunt. And that's uh Kind of one of those things we call the lost art in baseball is they'll sacrifice bunt, play some small ball, and Texas knows with this type of pitching staff, you score three or four runs in this lineup, and that's often enough to win a bunch of ball games. That's a mile up in the air behind second base. Lost in the shortstop there. Roof open, light breeze moving that ball around a bit, but Lawson makes the catch, and there's two outs. Tennessee, fourth time they've been at Minute Maid Park for this event. The last was back in 2012, and Texas, a regular visitor to Minute Maid, the 10th time they've played here. Their last was a couple of seasons ago in 2020. Here's Ivan Melendez, and you talk about power on this Texas team. They might not have the free swingers like an LSU or a Tennessee, but the Hispanic Titanic in Melendez <laughs> has hit a couple of monster shots sure this year has. in Austin. He gets a hold of it, it'll go. <laughs> and a cut fastball from Burns at 86. Throws the breaking ball down and out. And Melendez is that one hitter in that Texas lineup that you often see teams pitch around him. And oftentimes labeled as the one guy you don't want to beat you. Elevated just a bit. That popped in at 98. How do you do? Melendez will launch that one back and out of play into the upper tank. Yeah, Burns so far showing good command. Popped a couple of fastballs up in the zone. Came right back down to that outside corner. See if he goes back to the cutter. I wonder what's going through the mind of a guy like Chase Burns today. If he can keep those emotions in check, that adrenaline, that heart rate really pumping right now. That's it. I think the reminder for him is just stay calm. Take some breaths. Another ball shot up into the air. Way up there. Gilbert, the center fielder, camped underneath it. And the Longhorns go in order. A perfect first for Chase Burns, off and rolling in game three. I'm over comedy. I just want to get in more dramatic roles. Eric, you don't have any dramatic work to show them. Yeah, but I got the new Galaxy S22 Ultra on Verizon 5G Ultra Wideband. It's got amazing video on a crazy fast network. I can film whatever I want. Can you cry on command? No. But I can download the notebook really fast. <laughs> <laughs> Can you feel me while I'm crying? Now at Verizon, buy the Galaxy S22 Ultra and get the S22 Plus on us. 5G Ultra Wideband, now in many more cities. Spring training is back in the Palm Beaches this spring. Experience Astros baseball, plus the best beaches, dining, and entertainment after the game. There's nothing better than Astros spring ball in sunny Florida. For tickets and more, visit astros.com slash spring to book your trip. Plan your visit now to the spring training home of the Houston Astros. The Palm Beaches.
what you waiting for? What you what you waiting for? Give them what they came for. This is what they came for. Coverage of the Shriners Children's Classic is brought to you by Shriners Children's. Celebrating 100 years of life-changing care. Underway in game three. What a beautiful night. Roof open all game long. Temperatures in the upper 60s. Tennessee lost a runner at the plate in Jordan Beck. Trying to score all the way from first on a single and an overthrow. So it kept Trey Lipscomb from getting a chance to knock in some runs because, I mean, he's had a devil of a time trying to pick up RBIs. He only has 20 this year <laughs> with five home runs. Unbelievable start. You think about uh, a hot start like that, and if you're Tennessee, you don't want to make base running mistakes like what we saw happen to Beck in the previous inning. And let this guy come in and give him a chance to knock a runner in. Lipscomb 16 for 30. <laughs> A 533 average. Would there be a kangaroo court fine in the big leagues if you made it out of the bases to end an inning with <laughs> a guy hitting 533 is on deck? Yeah, with 22 RBI to lead your team. Yeah, that uh, would definitely fall under the, uh, the the fine category. Pete Hansen back to work. Hard to believe, though, Pete Hansen went undrafted. He was draft eligible after a second college year. Was 9-1 last year, a 1.88 ERA, and did not get drafted. Ball lifted out into right center, starting to carry. On the move is Austin. He'll get there in front of the bullpen to put it away. Wow. The speedy Austin Todd in right field. Seems like he's been at University of Texas for about a dozen years, but how about this chase in the gap? Makes a running catch the top of his cap and he saves a double off the bat of Trey Lipscomb. This ball just kept carrying. It just shows you the power Lipscomb has but the yeah, opposite field power and we heard from Alex Bregman in the first game when you hit a ball that deep opposite field here at Minute Maid Park that's some pop. Pretty good juice. Here's Jarrell Ortega. He's hitting 429. A couple of home runs. Tennessee second baseman. You know, getting back to Pete Hansen not getting drafted, Brett. You know, I, that's where the game has changed so much here in the past probably 10, 15 years. You know, just uh, scouts looking for pitchers to light up radar guns. And you know, this guy can pitch. He can pitch at the next level as well. And he should get a shot. Had a strange year. He was limited early by COVID. Had to build his way back up to be in the rotation. Another one hit a mile in the air, but playable center for Hodo the third, and that'll be the second out. Pat, you go nine and one with a 188 ERA for a team that finishes third in the country. You know how good he has to be, how many innings he has to throw, but he said afterwards he just thought his value was a lot higher at Texas than it was professionally. So, loves playing at Texas. It's been his dream, and here he is trying to take this team right back to Omaha. We want you to help us reach our fundraising goal. 10% right now for the weekend. Go to collegeclassic.org. Yeah, no doubt, Brett. You, you look at a guy that uh, is, is so well polished as a pitcher. I mean, he could literally go pitch in the minor leagues this summer and, and compete, at least at the single A level. And you think, of course, you got to develop. And you could really project uh, Pete Hansen in a, in a bullpen in the major leagues. Potentially a swing guy that can start go longer innings, but he just knows how to get hitters out. You know, he really kind of jumped on that scene back in 2020, and we mentioned Texas was here, and then the shutdown occurred pretty much right after the College Classic, but he didn't give up an earned run in 17 innings. You don't want that season to end in any <laughs> That's right. way, shape, or manner. <laughs> Couple of walks, 18 strikeouts. I mean, he was on his way to a fantastic 2020. California native pitching in Austin. Looking for a perfect second inning. He's had a couple of flyouts here in the second.
A couple of undefeated teams, the 8-0 Tennessee Volunteers, the 9-0 Texas Longhorns, ranked number one. Well placed, strike three call. Pete Hansen rings up Jared Dickey. Has a perfect top of the second. No score at minute mode. Watch me pirouette with style and grace. Watch me roam, discover, explore. I feel pretty, I must be a star. They helped me come a long way, I'll show you how far. Watch me. For 100 years, we've watched in awe as our commitment to transformative care continues to bring positive change to kids everywhere. Today, our brand is evolving too. Shriners Children's, the most amazing care anywhere. Watch me. Here I stand on my own two feet. Jump shot intact, here to compete. Skilled hands were there to mend the bone from loving halls that brought me home. My world stopped with a drive through the lane. Now give me the ball. You'll remember my name. Watch me. Orthopedic excellence at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. It's confirmed he's packing up and heading to Los Angeles next season. Wow. Let me down here. Miami is losing their star player. Oh. Ouch. This is going to rock the Western Conference. Why? We can't stop him from being traded, but we can help you trade in his jersey. With Amex Jersey Assurance, card members can get a free replacement jersey from the NBA store when their favorite player switches teams. One of the many things you can expect when you're with Amex. Tours of Minute Maid Park are available now. Come see the ballpark and get a behind the scenes look at the ins and outs of the stadium. From the dugout press box to the warning track and manual scoreboard, we guarantee you've never seen Minute Maid Park like this. Book your tour today at astros.com slash tours. Got another good idea. Come out tomorrow. Three games tomorrow, 11, 3, and 7 to thereabouts. And again on Sunday. Yep. And if you get bored, you can walk around the stadium and just take <laughs> your own tour. Now, I would suggest if you're going to come out tomorrow night for Texas and LSU, you better make a concerted effort to get here. Get here early. I think we're going to have a pretty packed crowd here at Minute Maid. And as we've talked about, Brett, when you've got the, uh, the only show in town for a while for baseball, it's uh, a lot of hungry baseball fans, especially in Houston. Saw some good representation early on here with LSU in the previous game. Certainly did. And Mitchell Daly fouls the Chase Burns pitch back to begin the bottom of the second. Yeah, great crowd earlier. Four and a half hours worth they got to see until LSU came from three runs down. They were down to their final strike. Trailing four to three in the 10th inning. Walked it off in the 11th. Jordan Thompson with the big blast. It's one of those memories I'm sure he won't soon forget. <laughs> Walk off in a big league ballpark. Mitchell Daly off to a bit of a quiet start. Six hits, although he does have six runs knocked in. It's a pretty good looking slider slash cutter when you mix in that 97, 98 mile an hour fastball for Burns. And he's got kind of that sweeping action with it. There's the cutter. And a wave and a miss. Yeah, that's a tighter spin. And that's just nasty. Start that pitch off middle in. That ball ends up outside corner. Really swinging through it. Here's Silas Ardwan, the catcher. Really good catcher who last year hit 239, but he's jumped that batting average up this year. And he might be an even bigger factor in their offense this season. Well, he's certainly showing well here early in the season and always known as a great defensive catcher. Plug a little offense into that. Stop! Great leader on the team and definitely see him playing at the next level as well. Coming to quick strikes 
on Ardwan. That's at 97 just off the corner. Burns just missing line on a couple of pitches, and that's one of the things that Tennessee coaching staff will really work with him on is trying to pitch better to contact, extend your games, pitch deeper into games, and of course the strikeouts are nice to pile up. But you definitely want him to try to extend his outings. To get away with that just a little bit when you can throw 98. <laughs> Yeah, you get away with a lot more mistakes, that's for sure. Just the change in velocity, if nothing else. Good look at Tony Vitello down there in the Tennessee dugout. He was telling us about this young man in Burns. And the guy's really worked on his body. Got a father that's a strength and conditioning coach. Reshaped his body. Already a good athlete to begin with. He gets the wave of the miss on our drive. Five up, five down, couple of Ks. Yeah, no doubt. It's a very projectable frame as well. You can just imagine 15, 24 pounds on Chase Burns. And it's probably some more in the tank there. Good fastball challenges hard one, and he comes up empty. Here's Murphy Staley, the DH. I think it's only natural to think about a young man like Burns and you see the natural gifts and then you start to project well how could he get better and continue to be an even better pitcher and performer the next couple of years but the excitement level is pretty much off the charts when you start with this yeah. this velocity that's the gift right you start with the gift and then you you build the uh, some other things around the gift Looks like Orbit's there behind the plate. He's entertaining the fans as we're off and rolling here in game three. There he is. Might be the most popular guy in the ballpark. Use the term guy a little bit loosely. <laughs> <laughs> most popular creature. The thing in green. Yeah. Think about how much people love this game. These crowds we're going to have this weekend. There have been some years where the weather hasn't always cooperated. We just closed the roof, but it can be cooled in here. And right now we popped the top and it's just beautiful outside and think about this matchup the number one undefeated Texas Longhorns team and even Norbit knows Tennessee is undefeated 8-0 coming off a college World Series trip for the first time since 2005. There's a payoff and Staley gets the first Texas hit for the two out single. And Staley watched a couple of tough pitches down in the zone and Burns going for the strikeout, still able to hold off. Then burns the fastball on a full count. And delivers the first Texas hit. And it brings up Skyler Messenger. Colorado native, Kansas transfer. Started 56 games a year ago in a Jayhawk uniform and hit 324. Well, this is a huge pickup for David Pierce and his Texas staff. Opening at third base, and there's a couple of guys battling for that position. But we have a leader like Messenger come over, and that's the high average. But last year at Kansas, there was a lot of gap power as well. And obviously, a guy who knows this conference pretty well 186 games in his Kansas career. A kid that was drafted way back when 2017 seems like forever ago but he was taken by the Cubs in the 22nd round he's got one more go round and he's doing it in a Longhorn uniform Pierce made the comment that he really has made a couple of tweaks in his swing to add more power so Troy Tulowitzki the hitting coach for Texas he's done a great job with him That's a nice resource to have, the experience. Tulo. Yeah, how about that? Chance to work with some of the infielders. Of course, talk hitting with as well. 
Let's talk to Robert Moore of Arkansas, who was part of the college national team this year. He said he remembered as a kid watching Tulo warm up, doing some unusual drills, and then he said he got a chance to do those with Tulo last year with the national team. Do the same drills with the guy that he was watching as a kid. <laughs> How about that? And I got a feeling that experience works for these Longhorns as well. This messenger raised up the hands and took a strike. And we talked to the Longhorn hitters, and they nothing but raving about what Tula has done for their lineup, and not just the, the tweaks mechanically, but it's also you know learning the approach, you know what to look for. Pitchers are trying to set you up. You know how do you defeat certain pitchers? And messenger goes down swinging there, but uh, certainly a great addition to that Texas staff. Chase Burns with the K. Two innings completes in game three. Itchy, scratchy, family not getting clean? Get Charmin Ultra Strong. It just cleans better, so your family can use less. Hello, clean bottom. <laughs> <laughs> they joy to go with Charmin. Innovation transforms the world, moving us forward not just in steps, but in leaps and bounds. Innovation created a healthcare system so extraordinary it not only improves the lives of veterans, it transforms the lives of healthcare professionals, collaborating through integrated care teams, accessing the latest technology, working with the most advanced medical science, and even creating it. Like discovering new ways to integrate technology with the human body. It's a unique culture of transformation that leads to solutions that best serve our veterans. The Department of Veterans Affairs, where innovation ensures those who served our nation are served by the very best. See how a career at VA can transform your future. Hey, I'm Matt Adams, host of the Fairways of Life show, and you can catch us every week right here on AT&T Sportsnet. Long-form interviews with legends of the game and today's stars. If it happens in golf, we'll take you inside of the ropes right here on the Fairways of Life show. 0-0 zero, zero game as we go to the third, Tennessee and Texas. Up in the booth, we have the National Director of Sports Management. Bob Roller and Bob, it wasn't that long ago I flip on my TV. There you are standing down in the field at Allegiant Stadium for the East West Shrine game on the NFL Network. And here you are today. So you've got the life. Oh, I do. <laughs> Former athletic director. I got out right before COVID and now working with Shriners for all our national sports. Big picture, just how much fun is it to look out and see these great crowds today, knowing that there's some huge crowds coming this weekend? Oh, it's really outstanding. And we know that a record will probably be set tomorrow night. For the uh, for the seven o'clock game, if it starts at seven o'clock, <laughs> right? But, uh, we absolutely are, are looking forward to that. But everyone is, has brought Tennessee brought a great crowd, as you can see tonight. Indeed. Yes. Evan Russell, the batter for Tennessee in the third, facing Pete Hansen. And that ball's headed left, and that's a base hit. Good beginning for the Volunteers in the third. And we love this field every year. But every other year when you get some of these SEC teams and Big 12 teams and the fan bases they bring and the, just the star caliber of players that we're seeing, we know that there's going to be nine, ten guys in this college classic we'll see later on in the big leagues. Oh, we, it really is. And seeing the Friday starters, we talked about that with Pat yesterday. The Friday starters are just amazing nowadays. But you're exactly right. And the atmosphere around the city, around the hotels, yeah, it feels like you're at a, at a bowl game in late December. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> Bob, tell us about your role with Shriners and uh, what do you love about it? Well, more than anything, after you've talked to these patients all weekend long and seen those stories, that's what makes such a difference and what is the reason that we do it every day. But I do have a love for sports. I've done it my entire career. And to be able to mesh, mesh the two together, right. uh, I, I really I really hit the jackpot there. <laughs> that's great. I know you love spreading awareness and, and sharing the stories from the patients and the people involved with Shriners, but to be able to do it, for a bowl game, the East-West game, the golf tournament in Las Vegas, and this has been year in and year out. You guys have really built up your portfolio over the last decade. We really have, and, and this past year we added uh, college basketball That's to right. our resume I forget. with the Charleston Classic, <laughs> the Shriners Charleston Classic, which yep. we'll have for the next four years in Charleston, South Carolina, a very high major tournament in November. So with the Shriners Open on the PGA Tour, with this event being so big and the East-West All-Star game being the nation's oldest college All-Star game, 
now moving to Allegiant Stadium in, in Las Vegas. It's it's been a big plus for us for our, to show the whole story. To those of us who've been here over the last several years, there's a ground ball to third by Lawson. Handled nicely by Messenger in time to get the first out of the inning. It's only been about four or five years I've been pushing you guys to get a college basketball event, and you got it up and rolling. So tell me how it went this year. Well, it went great. There was one by St. Bonaventure, who at that time was about 13th in, in the nation, uh, has come down a little bit throughout. We had Clemson, St. Bonaventure, West Virginia, Temple, Boise State. Some great teams. Uh, yeah. Yes, next year's field is going to be announced right around this year's Final Four. But we always usually have uh, representation from the state of South Carolina. My understanding is the Gamecocks and the College of Charleston will be in it this coming year in November. And what a great setting, too, to take a trip down to Charleston in November. It absolutely is. It's a great arena. It's a 4,500-seat arena that was full uh, for the West Virginia St. Bonaventure Championship game. All 12 of the games are aired on ESPN or ESPN2. Bob, it's obviously, you get a lot of... Uh, Great press here with uh, the Shriners name everywhere. What else do these types of tournaments do for Shriners? Well, what we learn even as people come in and speak to our Shriners that who are here is is someone today in Waco uh, needed a referral. Needed they did uh -huh. not they did not realize that their child was eligible that they could go be seen this week. And uh, I've obviously, as you've heard, they, they will not reach into their wallet for that. There, no, there, no need for that whatsoever. So yeah. patient acquisition and letting people know our story uh, is really huge here. The videos that are so great that are played in in house. But we had a real life situation today where someone wow. got a referral after they learned uh, t speaking with one of the patient. Yeah, that's a huge win. Yeah. yeah. Seth Stevenson, the batter. I got to believe. There can't be many more rewarding experiences when you can talk to a patient who's been helped by Shriners or to talk to a parent and let them know how Shriners will help them out with their economic need and just to see that reaction in their faces. Oh, it's unbelievable. And, and a story that happened uh, at golf uh, just in the past few weeks is John Rahm, the world's number one golfer, worked with one of our patients in Phoenix. Uh, John Rahm came out this past year mentioning that he was born with a club foot uh, and for the first three years of his life. Uh, was faced with that until he had numerous surgeries. That story came out to a young boy named Phoenix who met with him at the Waste Management Open, and they just had a great time but telling the story. John has really embraced Shriners, and, and one of the areas where we work is with Club Feet. Oh, man, outstanding. See on the screen, fundraising goal this weekend. We're at 10%, so we want to encourage you to participate. Collegeclassic.org for those that want to jump right in. Absolutely. LSU uh, filled up their donation bucket after that walk-off right? home. Tremendous. Yeah. <laughs> yes. There you go. 2-2 two -two pitch. A little bit in. You've got, uh, Marty Gras going. You've got uh, LSU baseball winning here in Houston and now filling up the bucket. That's, that, a, that's exactly right. And the roof is open this weekend. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's a great weekend in town. Of course, the Houston Livestock Rodeo going on. The College Classic, which has become a tradition as well. And the weather could not be any better. Ground ball back to Hanson. He's going to throw to third, try to get Russell on this rundown. And Russell's going to stay in long enough for Stevenson to go to second. So they just exchanged spots, but now two gone. And just great mound presence by Hanson after he fielded that soft ground ball off the bat of Stevenson. Just a base running mistake there by Russell. Trying to advance. Well, that's a funny spin, didn't it, Pat? Yeah, it did. He got jammed on it. Like you said, Brett, the out would have been made at first base had Russell stayed at second. So really, not a big loss for Tennessee, but Russell gets erased. And that heads up play by Hanson. Keep in mind, Tennessee ended the first inning when they lost Jordan Beck at the plate. He was going first to third in a single. There was an overthrow against the railing of the dugout. He tried to score. And he would have a throw beating by about 10 feet. He just about got in there. Bob Roller joining us up in the booth this inning as Tennessee and Texas wrap up day one. You know, I keep going back, Bob, to March of 2020. We were here. The Texas Longhorns were here. And Lipsius will bounce one to the right side, fielded by Daly, and will flip the first to end the frame. We'll finish with Bob on the other side. But Tennessee gets a hit. They strand a runner. Still zeros up on the scoreboard at Minute Maid.
Watch me. Watch me shine with every snap. Born to move fans, to cheer and clap. Two different legs, that's how I play. One built from science to help me on the deck. Between these lines, I'm all heart and muscle. Don't stare too long, you'll miss the hustle. Watch me. Pioneers in prosthetic technology at Schreiner's Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Watch me. Watch me roam, discover, explore. The forest is quiet, the river will roar. One slip by the fire is all it took, but they made my arm better. Just take a look. Under moon and stars, that's where I love to stay. Let's go play in the woods. I'll show you the way. Watch me. The place to turn for any bird. Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Step up to the plate and join the official kids club of the Houston Astros. Presented by HEB. <laughs> Children 12 and under will receive four tickets to a select Astros game, a jersey, drawstring bag, a hat, and lanyard, as well as the opportunity to be selected for exclusive events during the year. All for only $30. You can become a Buddies member today by visiting astros.com slash buddies. Hey, Marucci has teamed up with Shriners Children's to provide fans with a fully customized official college classic souvenir bat. Fans who donate $100 or more receive the free bat from Marucci. Donations of $250 or more will earn a free full-size bat engraved with their own name. So visit collegeclassic.org today to make a donation and receive your free Marucci baseball bat. Hey, I got my last year, Brent. I was going to say, I think Bob needs to bring one in here and show it off. It's an awesome bat. Yeah, Marucci did a great job with it. They were just uh, outstanding. They were personalizing them down for us down below tonight. Oh, they're, man. They're great. Those guys are incredible. Trey Faltini leads off against Chase Burns in the bottom of the third inning. Again, we're visiting with Bob Rolder, the National Director of Sports Management, about the properties Shriners have, including, of course, the College Classic. How many years now has this been going on with Shriners? This is the ninth. That, that, since it's we've been the Got a big sponsor. anniversary coming up then next exactly right exactly right of course the east west shrine game that was at the las vegas raiders stadium the golf tournament as well the college basketball event in charleston so that those four events i would imagine occupy a bulk of your time they really do and uh, we also have motorsports uh, promotions that we do throughout the year there's not a particular driver that we have all throughout the cup series but we we do that as well and um there, there's always more that we're thinking about right now. There are quite a number of people in the Shrine world are in hockey territory. Oh, there so you go. That's an area oh. that we may dive into uh -oh. soon. <laughs> guys just keep expanding. I like it. That's Craig Faltini takes ball four. During these events, how often you get a chance just maybe to interact with random fans who come through the gates that maybe don't know a lot about Shriners. They're here for the sports, but able to understand and learn a little more about what you guys do. We really do. Obviously, the Shriners themselves who are here at, with presence, with their fezzes, are, are asked questions. I've been working the concession and the merchandise stand quite a bit because we're selling quite a number of, of merchandise. You're blowing items. it out today, aren't you? <laughs> so <That's> people, <laughs> people are asking uh, quite a bit. We used to sell blankets a lot, as you recall, on yeah, these colder tournaments, but this year the T-shirts are moving very fast. <laughs> We do get to see that, and they'll come up so often and say, my niece, my nephew, my granddaughter, someone was uh, at a shrine patient years ago, and we'll hear from people who were shrine patients in the 40s and 50s that, that come up to us. It just always is, a, is amazing. Wherever I go, and whenever people read our logo on, on uh, in an airplane or an airport, they'll come up and tell the story. Yeah. Bob, talk about how uh, Shriners is funded. I know you were, we're asking for donations tonight, but uh, give us kind of the breakdown of how you guys make your budget every year. It is 100% donations, and uh, it's all a lot of times. I'm sure many of you have seen the commercials all your life that we have with, with Alec and many others that uh, are just absolute rock stars in those commercials. Our patients tell our story, and uh, we don't really go with national spokespeople. We, we let the patients tell the story. But it is 100% donations. Obviously, it happens by people who leave money in their wills and estates. But uh, the 
the lion's share of how we operate every day and do what we do for these 1.5 million children is through donations. Yeah. So impressive. Yeah. It is. And just the crazy times we live in. And I was beginning to talk about being here in 2020, able to play that event right before the shutdown. But, you know, every once in a while, I think we need to be reminded about the good that people do. And those are pretty good examples when they 100% fund what Shriners is able to do. It really was, a, and a great anecdote to that is that since the COVID struck us two years ago, almost to the day, uh, our donations went up, is have that gone right? up. And there are many people who can tell you different scenarios. A lot of folks were home yeah. more, and they had more discretionary income to give. Faltini with the steal, able to take that base, his first of the season. People really pulled together, and, and our, our, our bottom line went up over the last two years, which is really oh. amazing. That's good news as well. And I think the fact we were able to get the Classic in in 2020, as you see Faltini running here against Russell, to be able to play last year, I know it wasn't back to 100%, but we found a way to get this event in last year, which was only going to build towards this season. We should sure do. And that was the, it's really amazing. We, we'd never missed a college classic. Right. And, uh, even last year with limited fans and very much uh, COVID restrictions, we did get it in. And that, that's very strong. We got uh, 2020 in this before we got shut down. That was uh, the Dane Acker no-hitter with Oklahoma. And I think it was a week later, maybe we were uh, college baseball season shut down for good. We were done. Uh, that was that. Everything fell. Uh, if you all remember the, the NBA game canceled that night. That's right. That, that woke us up. Tom Hanks finds out he has has it and that became the story yeah. and, and then it really shut down baseball went away ncaa tournament did not take place that year and of course even their tournament last year was impacted with very few fans as uh, douglas soto the third in and that's going to be a strike so i think that gets back to just the good fortune of being able to get all of these college classics in absolutely and ne next year the date is already set for early march when we're here with the same window and uh, look forward to announcing the team shortly. We do that on Sunday. Always a popular time to look ahead and see the teams that'll be coming here next. Uh, yeah, I think it's fantastic with teams like Texas and others that have been regular participants, almost making a path that every other year cycle. Yeah, it's been exciting. And, and of course, uh, you know, we talk about it all the time, Bob, the, the teams that host the child patients. I mean, those, these teams get a lot out of those meetings. And I, I think, you know, when you think about what they do for the kids to host them for a day, but the, the impact that we hear from the players is always a, a, a major deal for these teams. They, they stay in touch. They come back. We've had some patients that did these videos and then will go to Omaha with yeah. them four months later. And, and they'll remember, they, they really take them under their wing, and that's what's so great about it. All five of the six have made it here this weekend that did those videos on campus. Douglas Hodo the third, the leadoff hitter in there with a count of nothing and two, trying to pick up Faltini from second base and play the game's first run. Yeah. And he's going to chase. Back-to-back -back strikeouts by Chase Burns. And he's already got five strikeouts. That's yeah, a combination of the high 90s fastball, then he mixes in that cutter. Yeah, Bob, not even in your best days could you hit that pitch, right? No, not with a pick <laughs> That's the great equalizer, that uh, slider or cut fastball. So difficult to square it up. What, what did you hit on the gun in 92? You know, uh, I was, I think at the height of my velocity, I was 93, 94. That was some juice back then. Yeah, that was using the, the old guns, right? <laughs> yeah. I used to have the, the jugs gun or the ray gun. Which one would you use, right? The, and they give you some different readings. I don't know what they use today, but these pitchers are throwing harder overall. The man standing behind Dodger Stadium down the road. You remember that guy? Oh, yeah. That's right. Yep. Fernando's guy. Yeah. That's right. It's a wave and a miss by Eric Kennedy. Right behind that little cutout window they had. Yes. Yep. Brito, maybe? I don't know. Just throwing a name out there. We'll look <laughs> that one up. We just lost half the audience for that reference, but that's okay. <laughs> One ball and one strike to Eric Kennedy. Waves and misses all kinds of movement down and in. On that pitch from Chase Burns. Kennedy always in danger of maybe beating something out. 27 
infield singles, 16 bunt hits a year ago, and obviously not bunting with two strikes, but a guy who can still get his hits even when he's not using the barrel. I think I got him. And I talked about Texas last year, Pat, the tremendous amount of walks they took and hit by pitches just to put base runners on, put a little pressure for the heart of the lineup. Well, that can't feel good. 92 on the calf. <laughs> oh, That's going to hurt tomorrow. Couple of base runners aboard for the Longhorns. First real test for Chase Burns today, and it's the Hispanic Titanic Ivan Melendez. Tremendous raw power, flight up to center is only time in. Game one today, Baylor over UCLA, two to one, a game that went to the final inning, and UCLA had a chance to tie or win it. A walk-off homer in the 11th in game two by LSU over Oklahoma. And Burns will look for Altini back to the bag at second. You get a chance to be a fan there, Bob, or you on the go too much to yeah. Oh, I absolutely back. get a chance to be a fan. I, I made a point to watch the bottom of the eighth of the LSU-Oklahoma game, and you could sense that comeback coming. Yep. And, uh, the same two guys delivered in those two innings. But, no, I really do enjoy that. I love college baseball. I always have. And it was one of my favorite sports to be a part of when I was an athletic director for so many years because you could sort of breathe a little bit while you were at a game. In there at the belts for strike one. It's a dangerous spot, Pat, for that slider slash cutter right there. It is. Yeah, he's controlled it pretty well, though, and so you know, he had that opening sequence with Melendez, and I certainly don't want to give a fastball out on the plate to him. You know what kind of power he has. Up over on 50 on the pitch count for Chase Burns, trying to get through three scoreless innings. Strand a couple of Longhorns. Just walked a man, hit a runner, batter this inning. Melendez, the leading RBI hitter for the Longhorns, and see what Chase Burns wants to finish him with. This guy that was drafted by the Marlins in the 16th round last year did not sign. Back to Texas and a chance to try and get back to Omaha. Did he offer? I think he did. Yes, sir. On the appeal, that's strike three, and the inning ends. And Bob Roller, thanks for stopping by as always. Thank you, Bert. Thank you. Three innings complete, 0-0 zero, zero game. Nice. Chloe and Rennie went down the sand dunes. We need a real adventure. Let's make it real. Compare travel credit cards that help you book adventures beyond your backyard. Or compare cashback cards and turn everyday purchases into your next unforgettable experience. Compare your way there. Find the smartest financial products for you on NerdWallet. Big moments. The best fans. Feel the excitement and don't miss a moment. Astros 2022 season tickets are on sale now. Astros.com slash season tickets. Spring training is back in the Palm Beaches this spring. Experience Astros baseball plus the best beaches, dining, and entertainment after the game. There's nothing better than Astros Spring Ball in sunny Florida. For tickets and more, visit astros.com slash spring to book your trip. Plan your visit now to the spring training home of the Houston Astros. The Palm Beaches. The Houston Astros are hiring. Join us on Saturday, March the 12th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. in Union Station for a part-time job fair. 
Hiring for our part-time positions in retail, guest services, and tickets. To see what specific positions are available, visit astros.com slash jobs and click on the part-time job fair posting for more information. A week from tomorrow, we're in game three of day one. The Shriners Children's College Classic. So far, so good with Pete Anson going through this vaunted Tennessee lineup. Hey, he's held him in check, Brett. It's, uh, it's been a little combination of a couple of hits here and there, but Anson getting himself out of trouble in the first. Really a nice heads-up play last inning. To erase uh, what could have been some difficulty, and there he is, pretty much as advertised. He's around the plate, great command, mixing in his pitches. Moving the fastball in and out. So far, Tennessee with uh, three hits, not on the board. Off to an 8 0 start. It's now been four straight years. They've started at least 7 0. That ball smoked by Jordan Beck in the center, but it's going to hang up for Douglas Hodo, the third. That ball just refused to drop. One loud out. That was a great swing by Jordan Beck. You saw him pull those hands in and got the barrel on it. That was a shot to center field. Unfortunately for Beck, right at Douglas Hodo, and Hodo makes about 10 steps coming in on the run and retires Beck, but that ball was hit well. Drew Gilbert, the batter. Of course, we had a walk-off home run in game two. Tennessee had a flair for the dramatic last year. In fact, four of Tennessee's walk-off wins came in extra innings, and after not having a walk-off homer since 2010, they hit four. The most dramatic was Drew Gilbert. A walk-off grand slam in the bottom of the ninth inning against Wright State in the regional for a 9-8 win. I mean, Pat in danger of losing to the four seed right out of the gates. Drew Gilbert turned that frown upside down. The celebration was on, and... <laughs> The volunteers would find themselves in Omaha before the season. Yeah, was I was going to say that was the swing that really turned it around for Tennessee in the postseason. And you, know, you, you could live off of a lot of momentum off a hit like that. Certainly, volunteers did. And you look at the, the size of Drew Gilbert. He's got uh, really a lot of tools. He runs well in center field. Plays great defense. Strong arm. And at the plate, just a great situational hitter with, like you talked about, Brett, has pop. It's what made that offense so dangerous, especially at their park, Lindsey Nelson Stadium. Hanson misses off the corner. Bases empty, one out, the top of the fourth. Still looking for the game's first run. Gilbert had the single back in the first, in which Beck would eventually try and come all the way around and score, but was erased at the plate. Gilbert will draw the walk, and it's going to bring up the red hot Trey Lipscomb, who Hit a shot to the warning track and right, but was retired in the seconds. And we mentioned what Lipscomb has done this year with five homers and 22 RBIs. He had 14 RBIs in a series against Iona. Hit for the cycle one day, came back the next day, and was a double shy of doing it again. <laughs> it's, uh, it's unreal. It doesn't matter what level of baseball no. you play, it's, uh, you know. Nine RBI in one game, 14 in a series. And, and hitting for the cycle became the fourth volunteer to do so. And Astros fans who are watching today will certainly throw out a name that, yes, Chris Burke was one of those. And I guarantee you if Berkey's watching, and I'm guessing he is, he has a detailed explanation for every hit. He can tell you where the <laughs> double went and the triple on what pitch. And then he'll probably pull out his phone, and I'm guessing he's got that somewhere where he could show you on his phone. And he was joined by Trey Lipscomb. Against the Iona Gales. 
I love what head coach Tony Vitello said about this team. He said, you know, you come off a, a situation where you get to the World Series, and you think you may have a, a little bit of a, you know, down year, but these guys have just fed off the energy with each other. High fly to Douglas Soto the third, and that's the second out. He said from the fall to the spring and getting ready for the season, these guys were all jacked up. They stayed hooked up. He said uh, just really, really impressive to see the leadership and how this team has come together and jailed this year. And so you always look for that, uh, that the team has the edge. You called it the it factor. You know, you always look for that as a coach. And, and he said, these guys have it. This, this volunteer team has that it factor. Isn't that the fun aspect of a program rebuild or build when you know things have taken off? You don't lose players, you reload in some senses. That's it. And I but think the identity stays the same. It goes back to exactly what Vitello was telling us. that you know When he came to Tennessee, he really made the effort to make this kind of the number one sport you know, in Knoxville. He said it's a great sports town, and he really wanted to fill up the stands and fill up the seats, and they, they've accomplished that. He said they had to add new seats this year to the stadium. And they need more, yeah. a lot more. Ortega flying up to center is only time in. That one's foul wide to third. It's one of those venues where you put 4,000 plus in there in Knoxville. But it does feel like all 4,000 are on your back if you're a visiting <laughs> player. Yeah, that's what you want. You want that, uh, that tight knit feel in the ballpark. And you get uh, 4,000 fans can feel like 8,000 when they're <laughs> making noise on top of you. You mix in the wins and the walk off celebrations. It made for quite a year in Tennessee. Well, there's excitement back in the Tennessee baseball program, and Tony Vitello is really the key reason why. He's got, uh, you know, Frank Anderson came there with him as the pitching coach, Josh Elander, and that Richard Jackson. That staff has done an incredible job. And the first thing we wanted to do was recruit players in Tennessee, get, you know, really get our surrounding area, keep guys from leaving out of the state or going to Vanderbilt. We wanted to make sure that they had an offer here to stay home in their backyard. They've recruited really well. Off and rolling is Gilbert. And he's out at second base. Gilbert doesn't agree. He wants a review. Arguing with second base umpire Michael Banks, he's not about to leave his position. He thinks he beat it. Yeah, that was a bang-bang play. I thought his hand got in there before the tag was applied. Tilla was quickly out of the dugout to uh, ask for that challenge. So we'll stay right here and, until we get a decision. Of course, Tennessee asked for a challenge in the first. They lost that. And this is one of these games where a run here or there might make the difference. Oh, no doubt. And it, it's a play like this, even with two outs, if you get Gilbert in the scoring position, you've got uh, Jarell Otego obviously hitting over 400. You want to give him a chance to hit. There's the throw. Oh, goodness. It does appear that hand is in there. I think so, too, but I was fooled earlier today in a review, and we have had some really close ones. Can you overrule it on the field of out with that? That look? That's a tough angle, yeah. I think if that's the only angle, it might be difficult. Had he gone to the back corner of that base with his left hand? That was a mistake there on the slide, yeah. And he would have been in there. Yeah, you definitely want to go to that back corner. Once they teach base runners, too, you're trying to get as far away from that throw and tag as you can. And Tennessee's been thrown out trying to steal just one time all year and 17 successful steals. If this one stands, it'll end the fourth inning. It was a pretty decent jump from uh, Gilbert at first base, just a Really good throw from Ardwan. You saw the one hop throw, but he got rid of it quick. The pop time on that was really good. There's the, the slide by Gilbert with that hand going into the inside part of the bag. Let's see what the Sunpine crew is able to come up with. One more look. Yeah, Gilbert popped right up and asked for the review, and that's uh, usually an indication that the runner was convinced the tag came after he hit the bag, but it doesn't matter what the runner says. <laughs> it goes back to 
What does video replay show? And it has to be conclusive to overrule the call. And of course, the call on the field was out. Let's see if this call might stand. Usually when you're going to tag that elbow or in the elbow area, you're probably not going to win the battle. But pretty good job of putting this tag down. Tell you what, I still don't know. Yeah, you can slow that thing down, we'll stop it. And be hard to tell. Does wearing that oven mitt make it harder to see? I mean, if you had fingers, would it be able to see if he's on that base or not? No, because you've got the, the difference in color between the mitt and the bag. You think that would help? You think, you think it would help, but in this case, I think it's just so close. How do you overturn it? And if uh, Tennessee loses this, it's going to be their, their second challenge loss. They're out of challenges. And the call's going to stand. So the inning ends. On we go to the bottom of the fourth. It remains a 0-0 game. Dang, son. This bacon is just hanging out of this burger, dog. That nice, tangy, smoked sauce. The bacon on this burger is just asking me to eat it. You should oblige. Sonic bacon on bacon, quarter pound double cheeseburger. Officially hoop season on AT&T Sportsnet. So let's ball, baby. Oh, look at that! Look at that, Kevin Porter Jr. Because this is our season, and it's always game time on AT&T Sportsnet. Six remarkable kids have each teamed up with a participating university for the Shriners Children's College Classic Team Fundraising Challenge. Now. All weekend long, teams will compete to see which fan base can raise the most money in support of Shriners Children's. So go online to collegeclassic.org to donate in honor of your favorite team today. And we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Still waiting for that game's first run. Mitchell Daly, Silas Arduan, and Murphy Staley be the scheduled hitters against Chase Burns. Last year resulted in another trip to the College World Series for the Longhorns. Hard to believe it's 37 all time. Almost lose count, don't you, when it gets to be that number? <laughs> That's a lot of trips. And this man, Daly, was right in the mix. Hit 316 a year ago. Reached base in 54 games, had 17 multi hit games. Takes that sweeper for a strike from Burns. Yeah, it goes right back to the expectation level that, uh, you know, these Texas Longhorns have coming into every season. But you know, as you asked David Pierce, he said, it doesn't bother my players. They come here to Texas knowing that's the expectation. Anything less than a College World Series trip is a, is a pretty big disappointment if you weren't to burn orange. And... Daily down on strikes. That's now seven strikeouts, though, for Chase Burns, the freshman. Yeah, that's an incredible night. Incredible start for him and, and just adding to the stats he's already put together in this, this young season. You know, he's yet to give up an earned run in his two games. And if you want to look back and say, well, look at the competition. Maybe it, it wasn't uh, a University of Texas or it doesn't matter. I mean, the, the guys coming out of the gates throwing strikes and showing some great stuff. That mid-90s fastball, the slider cutter and changeup combination. It's it's been spectacular. No, it's been fantastic to watch. And Silas Arduan bats for the second time. Because, again, Tidwell is injured, and I don't know if he might be able to come back in April or May. I think they're being very cautious with him. And 
Tony's doing a pretty good job with Tidwell. And again, D1 Baseball has, have, has him ranked as the 15th best college player for this year's draft. So that's a big time that's loss. That's huge, yeah. It's a huge loss, especially given the offense that Tennessee has. I mean, we talked about how vaunted the LSU offense is. And if their pitching holds solid, that could, uh, you, you could expect to see an LSU-type team in, in the World Series. And certainly for Tennessee. Because if you had Tennessee's offense and the current incredible numbers that they're putting up, and you had a healthy Tidwell, and you could run Burns out there in your Saturday or Sunday slot, all of a sudden things are looking really good on Rocky Top. Yeah, no, no doubt, and, and the rotation is pretty set after that, so and they've got some good arms in the bullpen. Murphy Staley hammers one on the ground to Lawson in short, just like that. Chase Burns has a perfect fourth inning. Four scoreless innings for the freshman. On we go to the fifth here at Minute Maid. Watch me. Watch me pirouette with style and grace. An open floor of inspiration. This is my place. Five positions to start, leotard and tights. A story through movement under music and lights. Straight and tall, they promised I'd stand. I'm a ballerina who twirls like the blades of a fan. Watch me. Innovative scoliosis treatment at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Step up to the plate and join the official kids club of the Houston Astros. Presented by HEB. <laughs> Children 12 and under will receive four tickets to a select Astros game, a jersey, drawstring bag, a hat, and lanyard, as well as the opportunity to be selected for exclusive events during the year. All for only $30. You can become a Buddies member today by visiting astros.com slash buddies. Coverage of the Shriners Children's College Classic is brought to you by AutoNation, America's largest and most admired automotive retailer. Brett Dolan, Pat Holmes here at Minute Maid. When we go to the fifth inning, kind I know we always anticipate and hope for well-pitched games to crank up this college classic. We have really seen that. I know it was 5-4 in that second game, but a lot of that offense came late after the starters were gone, and all six starters today have been very good. Oh, man, outstanding. And it's, uh, you know, you kind of expect that from a Friday starter, but you don't always get that. And you, know, you get these pitchers coming to a big stage here at Minute Maid Park, and sometimes you don't know what you get. But uh, tonight, today, certainly has been outstanding for all six clubs now have had great starts. Indeed. Here's Ortega. He was at the plate when Gilbert was out trying to steal to end the fourth. So he's got an extra look at Pete Hansen. He's given up three hits, but that's it. The Texas staff that last year their earned run average was not only the best in the nation, it was the best by at least a quarter run. And they're not just picking up where they left off, they're actually improving that. That's by, just it, right? Quite a bit. And it's not against, you know, uh, mid-level teams. You're talking about uh, the weekend series against Alabama just last weekend where, you know, it was uh, two shutouts out of the three games. It's just, it's incredible. Corpus Christi was here last year, and we had a great kick out of talking with Scott Malone, their head coach, who was thrilled to be the last team in here. And he had a comment about the Longhorns. And I thought it was telling. He said, they don't let you breathe on the mound, and they don't make mistakes. <laughs> right. That's a double whammy. Exactly right. Well, it's, it goes back to, you know, the recruits that they get on the pitching mound. It's also Sean Allen. What a great job he's done as the Texas pitching coach. And, of course, David Pierce you know, really has kind of earned that reputation as well. And you go back to when uh, Pierce was at Rice under the tutelage of Wayne Graham and how Wayne Graham always – had great pitching staffs at, at Rice, and, and then David went on, of course, and eventually became the Texas coach, and, and brought that same philosophy with him, and, and Sean has done a great job just going out and finding these types of arms and developing these pitchers. 
Ortega socks one to center, but it's a deep yard out there. Cotto the third will put it away. He's been busy tonight. That's four putouts for Douglas Hodo the third. Well, Hodo can just flat go get the baseball. Great reads in center field and really makes a mistake with his footwork, and that's always the key when you're in center field, just trying to get that alignment right, going to the ball, getting good angles. Hodo's a good one. Jared Dickey, the batter. Facing Pete Hansen for the second time. Hansen led the Big 12 in earned run average last year. 91 innings at a 1.88 ERA. Kind of a typical Pete Hansen start. You know, you look up at the at the gun, and it's upper 80s fastball, and you, know, you see a pretty good breaking ball, pretty good change up, and you go. The guy's throwing a shutout. That's just kind of a typical PS start, right? Like nothing flashy, nothing special, but he just flat out pitches. Strike called on the outside corner. Is there anything we're missing talking about Hanson? You've gone through his repertoire and how, of course, he throws strikes. He, he handles both corners of the plate. Maybe getting a little bit off the plate doesn't hurt right there. A little just of a strike, but. Uh, Ball sock to left, traveling back to the Crawford boxes, but it'll be run down by Kennedy. Looks like he's played this building before. <laughs> That's right. He hate to go full speed towards that cast iron in the uh, Daniel scoreboard, but he made the catch. Negotiating that corner well in the Crawford section. And, you, know, you look at this Texas outfield with uh, Kennedy and Hodo and Todd. It's could possibly be one of the fastest outfields in college baseball. These guys can flat out cover the ground. And, Going back to, to Hanson, you know, Brett, I don't think there's anything we're missing. I mean, it's, it's the repeatability, the mechanics, and that ball's hit. Evan Russell sends one of the Crawford boxes and gone. The first run in this game comes on a laser beam, a solo home run from Russell. And the Volunteers on the board in the fifth inning. This was a guy last year who had two different three former games. He's got the stroke. He does. That was a rocket. He's going to get a pink hat and uh, a fancy jacket, too. <laughs> hey, listen, I know there's a lot of people starved for baseball. If you don't enjoy wearing a feather jacket and a pink hat after you hit a home run, I don't know what we can do for you. That's a celebration there. <laughs> yeah, that's a no doubt. And that ball's out of any ballpark. And of course, we talk about the, the Crawford section and only being about 315 down the line. But that was a laser beam. There's some life now in that volunteer dugout. Arkansas led the nation in home runs a year ago, but Tennessee certainly did their fair share of damage, too. There's a roller that'll get by a messenger off the bat of Cortland Lawson. So instead of a quick inning, Russell hit the homer, and then another base hit as the Volunteers in business. He was hit hard by Lawson, and certainly gets under the glove of Messenger. Probably a ball he will tell you he should have had. But he'll probably go down as a base hit. Finish my thought, though, Pat. This was a Tennessee team that hit 98 home runs last year. When you start flirting with triple digits, you know that that is a factor in almost every game. And even games where Tennessee doesn't hit home runs. That possibility, that threat of a long yeah. keeps everybody invested in the game for nine innings. No doubt, it, and the pitching staff, it puts pressure on pitching staff as well because you just know you can't make many mistakes out over the plate. Tennessee's gonna eventually run into one, and David Russell does there. You know, Dave Van Horn of Arkansas, who was the unanimous number one for almost the entire year last year, talks about his team who led the nation in home runs. And he said, listen, in the SEC on Friday nights, if you think you're going to string together four or five hits, you've got another thing coming. Yeah, right. You've got to be able to get some guys on base. Yeah, move whether that's a base hit, right. get some walks, and then you've got to be able to get that big shot that might change a game with one swing. That's exactly right. We saw it earlier. Oklahoma had a chance to beat LSU and left 13 runners on. You get that many runners in scoring position, and you've got to be able to push them across against a team like LSU.
All of a sudden, that pitch count for Hanson up over 70 as he tries to get through this fifth inning. Two out home run. Then the single by Lawson. Outstanding block by Indeed. Silas Ardwan. You saw the mechanics there. Just keeping his body square, that chest pointed down. Keeps the ball right out in front of him. One, two to Stevenson. Didn't miss by a lot. Back to the top of the lineup for Tennessee. Two balls, two strikes. Hard hit on a couple of bounces to Daly at second. He's going to throw out Stevenson to end the fifth inning, but the Volunteers get on the board on the Russell home run. It's one nothing. With Panera's You Pick 2, every meal is made fantastic. You can be fresh and fun, bold and classic cozy and precocious with 465 fresh clean craveable pairings find a you pick two for any mood enjoy a one dollar delivery fee when you order on our app today we're at the university of tennessee honored to have one of our shrine patients elliot here with us he's a patient at our greenville hospital we found out he had arthrogryposis in utero, so we sought out some arthrogryposis specialists. It was a really hard road. We went straight to Shriners. We had already lined that up. Arthrogryposis is a rare congenital condition. His hands and his feet are contracted. They have decreased muscle strength. Anytime you catch yourself caught up in your ego, you realize it's more than just about you. It's your teammates, and Elliot's one of those for us. Elliot's an active guy, and He's looking to get in the weight room and do things. So he's throwing the baseball around out on the field. It's a special person that we're adding to our team. Shriners Hospital for Children provides all this wraparound care to families regardless of their ability to pay. We've been doing it for over 100 years. We have treated over 1.5 million children since 1922. If you know that guy with the hat, he's, I think, the Shriners. Yeah, I love him. Go! Evan Russell's home run in the top of the fifth inning puts Tennessee in front over Texas one to nothing. Got a guest up in the booth. The one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend. It's Alec. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me. How many years have we been doing this? You know, it's been a while, but uh, I think this is my sixth time here at the Shriners College Classic, and every year it just gets a little bit better. <laughs> Well, Alec, you had to go off to school, and we missed you last year, but uh, <laughs> yeah, tell us, uh, just give us the update on what's going on in your life right now. Yeah, so um, I'm currently at my uh, in my second year at Northwestern University, uh, majoring in journalism, uh, so I'm well on my way to becoming a sports broadcaster and uh, calling games just like you guys, and I'm excited for my growth and development. I really like it at Northwestern. It, uh, they really challenged me, and that's what I was kind of looking Good. for in a school and in a program. And uh, Medill and all the professors at Northwestern, uh, they've all been fantastic to work with. So I really like it there. Listen, you show up in class on Monday, and everybody's going to say, what did you do this weekend? I went into Chicago. I a, went to a party. And you're going to say, yeah, I was on national TV. I was <laughs> doing my ambassador duties around the country. You're more than well on your way. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. But I don't know if I'll tell everyone all that. <laughs> <laughs> Skyler Messenger leading off this inning, and he's going to go down on strikes. That is now eight strikeouts for Chase Burns. You've been able to see this pitcher for Tennessee throw today? He's something else. He's been dealing today. I can't figure out if the shirt you're on, if this is a Astro shirt, if this is a Texas shirt, a Tennessee shirt, or you're just sucking up to everybody. You know, I'm just trying, I was just told to wear orange today, so this is the shirt that I got. You know, I think I kind of look good in it. I think you, you do, look too. great. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think you're playing to the crowd. You're looking good. <laughs> That's really the most important part of this. That's right. Thing. It's Trey Faltini. So what's been the highlight of the weekend for you so far, Alec? Well, I mean, the day, the tournament just started. I mean, we had a great <laughs> uh, second game today. That was electric. I loved seeing LSU win in a walk-off home run. Uh, but I, I on uh, Wednesday, I'm already forgetting my days, or on Thursday. Um, <laughs> like a true <I>, broadcast. <laughs> on Thursday, I did the coaches panel with some of the coaches here at the tournament, and, and that was a lot of fun. 
uh, over the years, I've built a really fun bond with, oh, here we go. Trey Fortini launches one to left. Will this come down? The game will be tied. Well, Trey Fortini's not known for his power. You wouldn't know it with that swing. One mighty rip, and this game is tied at one. What a shot. Tell you what, a local product from Thomas High School. You think he's fired up? Well, a great response by the Texas hitting lineup as well, right? They give up the run on the home run in the inning before, and Faltini comes up, right back up at the bottom of the fifth and ties this game up. And swing of the bat. Bobby Dynamite has to train Rolda. He goes a ball. the boxes. Yeah. And this is Austin Todd, but uh, Alec, you were talking about interviewing the coaches. That's got to be a lot of fun, just building up the relationships with those tremendous coaches. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, I am a little biased. Unfortunately, Coach Rodriguez is my favorite. We've been doing this for uh, a couple of years now, so we bonded over the Chicago Bears. We bonded over um, Chicago together, and he's just become a really good friend. And, Coach Johnson, Coach Pierce, and Coach Savage were also very fun to work with. You know, Coach Savage's son is actually a graduate at Northwestern currently. Yeah. And he's studying journalism, and, and the son, uh, Jack, if I remember correctly, he was tweeting me. He was saying, Savage liked me more than him. Yeah. So it, it was fun. <laughs> well, he might be right. <laughs> I think the fun part about this event, though, Alec, is, is the crowds. We had a great crowd for the second game. Another fantastic crowd tonight. You hear the Texas fans beginning to get into this one. I don't know exactly what tomorrow's going to look like with Texas and LSU, but I have a pretty good idea, and that's going to be incredible. It's going to be massive, and I cannot wait. I'm so excited for tomorrow. All for great cause, too. And that's a way to miss. So tell us about your duties as far as still getting a chance to go around the country maybe and tell people your story, tell them about Shriners, and obviously encourage them to participate, make some donations and the like. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've been traveling now with Shriners Children for seven, eight years just telling my story to anybody who wants to listen, honestly. <laughs> um, but it's, it's fun being able to be a part of such an amazing organization that really cares about helping kids with their medical conditions. Uh, when you're a part of such something so cool and when so many people have the same goal as you um, to just help others, uh, we make magic together here at, at, at Trainers and um, you can see that in the commercials. Douglas Soto the third, the batter. And in this crazy world right now where we need reasons to believe in humans and doing good, and trying to help others. I think Shriners is a shining beacon in that conversation. Absolutely. There are so many people in the organization who have dedicated their lives to make sure others are happy and, and healthy and getting the, the care they deserve. And I'm I'm blessed to be a part of this amazing organization. And I'm, I'm in a really cool spot where I can give back to people who have given me so much in my life. I can't imagine a time in your life where you won't be a part of Shriners in some capacity. <laughs> You're right. I, I will always do anything Shriners ask me. and um, I will be fundraising for them. I'll, I'll donate when you know I start my own career. Um, this organization means a lot to me. Uh, it, it always will. Were you at the East-West Shrine game? I was. Oh, you in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> That could be trouble. <laughs> God has gone full to Hodo. Northwestern's watching. and settled down. <laughs> <laughs> we won't get you in trouble. Out there. Yeah, the man of the town in Vegas yeah. takes on an entirely different dimension yeah. than other cities. Now tell us how you originally got connected with Shriners. Yeah, for sure. So I started going to the hospital for care when I was two months old. And um, ever since then, we've been balling together. All right, hold on. We're going to bring Alec back. That's the 10th strikeout for Chase Burns. But the home run from Faltini. He's tied things up. Couple of solo shots here at Minute Maid. Fun game on a Saturday night in the Lone Star State. Make Alec work. We're going to keep him in. Yeah. I was, I was nervous because I knew we were going to break. I, yeah, I didn't no, want to get into it you're, too you're quick. A pro. Move over.
over KFC. It's KFC Tenders. And the same creamy mac and cheese, crispy fries, buttery biscuits, and delicious sauces. The KFC 8-Piece Tenders Meal. Get free delivery on the KFC app. It's finger licking good. Each week, he takes you around the world for unlimited access to legends. You have done your research. And future legends. You are the first person I chose this. In depth with Graham Bensinger. We have some fundraising goals this weekend. You can go to collegeclassic.org to contribute. So Alex shows up, we were 10%. All of a sudden, bam, we're 20%. <laughs> Alec, you just uh, you just show up and things happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gotta get back to your question. Yep. So tell us how you originally got right. involved. Yeah. <laughs> so I started going to Shrine in Chicago uh, when I was two months old, receiving care, uh, rehab care, uh, surgeries, uh, just anything that I really needed. Shrine of Children in Chicago was there for me. Um, and, and about eight or seven years ago, uh, they approached my family and I. And they were like, would you guys be willing to tell your story on TV? Um, and so, of course, it was for Shriners, so we said, yes, absolutely. I, now, I thought it was going to be something local. I thought it was going to be something that my friends were going to, you know, take a couple of pictures and tease me about it a little bit. But it turned out to be a success, and we took it national, and uh, the whole country gravitated to that first commercial, and we just kept making magic ever since. Luke Lipsius down on strikes. I think he agrees. He doesn't agree, Alec, but uh, your story is amazing. And, uh, you know, it's, it's incredible when I see those commercials pop up and you know, they still show the same commercial of you giving away the blanket and the things that I, I'm sure you've done over the course of your, your tenure with your Shriners. But, uh, I mean, when I asked Bob, Rover last game, you know, how do you guys raise funds for Shriners? And he said, everything is donated. It's all given by folks at home. So you serving as an inspiration for people to give, Alec, you're just doing an amazing job. I appreciate it. But there's a whole team behind me who really makes me look good. I mean, the doctors, nurses, and the staff at the hospitals, they're tremendous. I only look good because the hospitals do an amazing job of helping kids all over the world. You mentioned surgeries. How many have you had in your life? I think I'm at 19 now. Mm. So I, because I recently, I uh, in November, I, I had a little bit of a wheelchair accident. I needed a couple of surgeries done on my uh, legs. So I'm right now, I'm currently on uh, the IR. Uh, but <laughs> oh, you know, I'll get back there soon. Uh, I'm also in that incident, I also broke my left shoulder, and I'm a lefty. What? So I'm not throwing 100 on the gun right now. Okay. Oh, man. I'll, get, know. I'll get back there soon. Yeah. Some of the LSU fans, they, they wanted me in there to bet while they were cold in the beginning. Yeah. But <laughs> I told them I, I just can't right now. Still be, yeah. 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 Still be heavy. Yeah. Still be heavy. Jordan back. Blisters one to center. Douglas Hodo the third has been busy, and he'll outrun that baseball for the second out of the inning. Second. That back row from Beck has had a couple of hard hits to center and just to the wrong guy out there Douglas Hodo again running baseballs down and making it look easy and a couple of bullets two gone for Drew Gilbert who has singled and walked don't you hate that Alec when you, you square baseballs up and it, it gets caught it's almost like it's not fair there's been a lot of good contact today some amazing outfielders have been making some plays today 
Alec joining us up here in the booth. The number one ambassador for Shriners, if we can give him that title, but we've been doing this for over half a decade with him up in the booth, and I think we like to believe we helped make Alec, but in reality, <laughs> he made us. Uh, probably not the case. He just kind of came up here one year, five, six years ago, took over, and Pat, we knew we had a star in our hands. That's it, yeah. yeah. We told him he could take our seats. <laughs> we appreciate you guys. <laughs> Two and the count. Well, I've never had to interview go. with Ernie Johnson. <laughs> Yeah, or Shaq. Or yeah, all right. The NBA Tonight crew. Final four. What else have you done? I've done a lot. I, uh, I've interviewed Roger Goodell. I've interviewed uh, some amazing athletes like Ron Duvalzi, uh, Shaq, and, and the rest of those guys. Uh, but I've also, now I'm starting to do some digital content with Shriners Children, interviewing some celebrities. Uh, recently, I interviewed Terry Crews. Uh, Ludacris and some other amazing guys. So it's been fun. Nice. That list is just beginning to get established. That's going to get bigger and bigger over the next decade or more. Two balls and two strikes from Pete Hansen to Drew Gilberts. Got him. Put him on the hand. He's been on base all three times, says Gilbert. Two out base running. Hanson trying to come up and in with that fastball. And just catches Gilbert. Looks like it hit him on that elbow guard. Take a look at it here. Mm, might have missed that guard. Yeah, I did. Bottom of the hand. Almost that, uh, that wrap around yeah, his. Maybe the wrist. Wrist. He was out trying to steal to end the fourth inning. Tennessee challenged. They lost that challenge. They lost one in the first one. Beck was out of the plate. They're hoping they don't need any more. And here's Trey Lipscomb. So, Alec, what's up next for you? Are you traveling back? Or are you, where are you going? I got to go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, Northwestern is very challenging, so I've had to limit the amount of uh, travel I've had the uh, past couple of years. But, uh, you know, I'm learning a lot, and I enjoy it at Northwestern. Yeah. We still have to get through this tournament. That's true. Yes, we do. We're <laughs> yeah. in the early stages of that process. Yeah, you're not going anywhere yet. <laughs> Did you bring some homework with you? Uh, you know, a little bit. <laughs> That's a no. I can't, I can't go anywhere without some homework. <laughs> That's right. Well, this is a dangerous hitter in Lipscomb again. Five homers, 20 RBIs, but a nine RBI gain. It's behind on the count. One and two to Hanson. A couple of nice backdoor breaking balls for Hanson. Texas fans up on their feet. They're going to punch out to end this inning. And Hanson delivers. Well, Hanson in the Longhorns. Out of trouble. We'll go back here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Tied one to one. Hey, Alec, thanks for stopping by. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Watch me pirouette with style and grace. Watch me roam, discover, explore. I feel pretty. I must be a star. They helped me come a long way. I'll show you how far. Watch me. For 100 years, we've watched in awe as our commitment to transformative care continues to bring positive change to kids everywhere. Today, our brand is evolving too. Shriners Children's, the most amazing care anywhere. Watch me. Here I stand on my own two feet. Jump shot intact, here to compete. Skilled hands were there to mend the bone from loving halls that brought me home. My world stopped with a drive through the lane. Now give me the ball. You'll remember my name. Watch me. Orthopedic excellence at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. You know Miller Lite only has one more calorie, right? Ah, and more taste! Good choice! No. Come on, him? I like him. Ah. Quick, 
The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker and is two times more absorbent so you can use less. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. The Shriners Children's College Classic is a tradition that unites athletic excellence and the most amazing care anywhere. Shriners Children's is dedicated to improving the lives of children with orthopedic conditions, burns, spinal cord injuries, and cleft lip and palate. All care is provided regardless of a family's ability to pay. So to learn more, visit ShrinersChildrens.org today. New pitcher coming on for Tennessee. Chase Burns went five innings, giving up two hits in the Solo home run by Faltini, one walk, and he struck out 10. Camden Sewell enters the game. Yeah, really an outstanding outing by Chase Burns, and pretty much what we expected. He showed a great fastball and a lot of life with all of his pitches. Held up the strikeouts against this Longhorn lineup, and he'll give way to Camden Sewell, and Sewell is a sinker slider specialist. He'll be 88 to 91 on the fastball. And a sweeping slider. Off to a great start this season, making his fifth appearance. He's yet to give up an earned run in eight uh, third innings. Only five hits, 11 punch outs, one walk. Opponents hitting 179. Sewell off to a tremendous start here in 22. Long and lanky, 6'4", the senior out of Cleveland, Tennessee. Made 23 appearances a year ago. He's facing Eric Kennedy and the heart of the Texas lineup. Kennedy, Melendez, and Davis. Hit hard and fair. Down the line and right. Next to bases for Kennedy. Question is, is he going to think about three? A pull up at second with a leadoff double. Was played back in by Beck and Wright. And a good beginning for the Texas Longhorns in the sixth. And got the 2 1 fastball up over the plate. And Kennedy delivers the leadoff double and playing a little bit safe with Melendez right behind him. Certainly don't want to make the first out of third base, so putting up the stop sign there at second. And now the Longhorns have a great opportunity to take the lead. David Pierce said this week, and I think it was an honest discussion that. You know, Melendez is not seeing a lot to hit. A guy that had 13 homers last year, he's produced a couple of tape measures this season. There's one guy who could change the game for Texas with one big swing. Whenever you have a big RBI guy in the middle of your lineup, a lot of times it comes down to who's batting behind him and who's providing protection because if you can pitch around a guy like Melendez, get a, a lesser hitter behind him, that's what creates those scenarios where Melendez may not be, be getting good pitches to hit. So, of course, David Pierce juggling his lineup early on, just like most coaches are, trying to find the right pieces and provide the best protection he can so that Texas can avoid Melendez getting pitched around. Sixteen thousand fans here tonight. Melendez gives the Longhorn fans something to cheer about. That's down to the fence. Kennedy will score, and Texas has its first lead of the night. The back-to-back -back doubles here in the sixth inning. Well, just a great job of hitting there by Ivan Melendez, and it's down to the count. And Sewell not able to put him away with that sweeping slider. He just reaches out there and barrels that pitch up into the left center gap. Not only a slider that uh, Sewell was trying to go down and away with and just caught too much of the plate. But Melendez doesn't miss those very often and now gives the horns the lead. So Camden Sewell has been brooded rather rudely. A couple of doubles after Chase Burns exited with five innings and ten strikeouts. Fun thing about Sewell, I mean, he's no stranger to Texas. He had three strikeouts and did not allow a hit in an inning and two-thirds of shutout baseball against Texas in the College World Series last year. 
that may have played into the opportunity to get him in this game. Yeah, no doubt. Especially in the tie ball game, Frank Anderson, the volunteer pitching coach, have to have that discussion. And Conversation continues. Frank Anderson's been a longtime pitching coach in this game. Sure has, yeah. One time head coach at Oklahoma State as well. And I think I last previously saw him down at University of Houston. He was there for a couple of seasons and Tony Vitello gets him to come to Knoxville, done a great job with this staff. Numerous guys drafted in the past couple of years off this pitching staff, and I see where to get back at it. Mitchell Daly has struck out twice, getting a chance to face Sewell for the first time, and Melendez just about ventured too far off second base. Nearly hitting 188. And obviously, it's early in the year. Hit 316 a season ago. These hitters know they're going to see great pitching all weekend long. They're going to see some arms. Well, if you're trying to get out of the slump, not a great place to do it. No, this I was weekend. thinking the same thing, right? <laughs> um, yeah. As we always talk about when you. Either not seeing the ball well or maybe your approach is not quite right. Sometimes better pitching can sharpen that up. And that can be the difference. It only takes one good game to kind of turn things around. But sometimes one good at bat. 2 and the count to Daly. Sewell could use an out. He could use a strike. Danger of putting Daly on base. And he gets the strike. But he ends up losing daily. A couple of doubles and now a walk. And the Longhorns looking at a chance for a bigger inning. Yeah, Sewell missing high with that slider. Command has not been sharp with that pitch. And a couple of fastballs off the plate away. He's effective when he's down in the zone. When that ball starts to get up in the zone, it really flattens out for Sewell, and that's when he gets hurt. Might be looking at the end of a short night if he doesn't get an out soon. Ardoin, the catcher's 0 for 2, and that pitch just does again carry off that outside corner. That's the location, just missed off the plate, but that ball was down in the zone, and he needs the ground ball. Ardoin not showing bunt. And Sewell gets a much needed strike. Volunteers got a run in the fifth on the home run from Evan Russell into the Crawford boxes. Faltini answered with a solo shot of his own in the bottom of the fifth. Couple of doubles. It's broken up the tie in the Longhorn sixth, but again, they're far from done. Melendez at second, Daly aborted first. Ground ball up the middle. Well, they're going to go to third to try and get a force, but no double play. Should Sewell have on to second to yeah, try to two. You know, Sewell goes to third base there. He gets the lead runner, which is which is great, but uh, I think he had the chance to double play. And it would have been a fairly easy double play had he gone right. to second base there. Running. Yeah. Might be an entirely different scenario if that was a chopper that takes him in the direction of third base. Yeah, no doubt. And it's uh, 
It's one of those plays you gotta obviously it's a quick reaction play and you gotta know what you're gonna do with the ball before it gets to you. Murphy Staley showed Bunt that he wraps on the second, but it gets by on Tatum. Here comes Staley home to score. Off the bat, thinking maybe double play. And instead, the Longhorns get a run and the wheels stay in motion. Well, Sewell does get the ground ball he was looking for, but uh, had a little bit of spin on it. It looked like Ortega just overplayed it to his left. It was slicing off the bat of Murphy Staley, and you see the fake bunt slash. And that ball was definitely spinning away from Ortega. And then you see him playing his feet, and he kind of lost his footing there. He was trying to make the adjustment. Went skiing a little bit on the dirt. It's a 3-1 Texas lead, and again, just one out, isn't it? Skyler Messenger has struck out his first two plate appearances. So Sewell got the comebacker that could have been a double play. He went for the lead runner. Another ground ball that looked like it could be a double play that results in no outs. Yeah, so you get uh, the mental error, then obviously the error E4 there. Texas uh, doing a pretty good job in this young season taking advantage of what pitching and defense has given them. And you know, a couple of runs this inning. Pretty mature hitter and messenger. Again, one of those uh, guys, very good situationally. Really handles the bat well. And Tennessee defense back up the middle, playing for the double play. Often going to Staley. Base hit left field. The third run of the inning is home. And messenger delivers. And the long ones just keep coming at the volunteers here in the sixth. Will be it for Kevin Sewell. And unfortunately, a rough start with the two doubles, but then could have been out of the inning had things gone differently on defense for the balls. And Texas has struck quickly here. Woke up a nice lead. That's four unanswered for the Texas Longhorns back in a moment. Hi. We're Warby Parker, and we're all about making vision care convenient. That's why we developed the Virtual Vision Test app. Use it to renew your expired glasses or contacts prescription from home with your phone in about 10 minutes. If everything looks good, a doctor will renew your prescription for $15. It's as easy as reading the eye chart at a doctor's office, except you're at home, on your phone, like you probably are right now. Download Virtual Vision Test today. Every road has its challenges. We say, bring them on. At Honda, we engineer each vehicle to outthink obstacles, to overcome difficult conditions. We engineer them for drivers who are determined to power through, just like you are. Rise to the challenge with the rugged performance of the Honda Ridgeline, Pilot, and CRV. Nerds! Hey. We've got to get you geared up, super fan. Game on. Let's compare here to there. Compare credit cards to find one that earns you cash back on jerseys that fuel the fandom. Compare and find a financial advisor so you can spend less time watching your investments wow. and more time investing in your team. Hit me. Oh. Compare your way there. Find the smartest financial products for you on NerdWallet. And Will Mabry on in relief for the Tennessee Volunteers. Tandem Sewell exits here after coming on relief in the sixth inning. Sewell gives up uh, three runs. Responsible for two more Longhorn base runners. Mabry, the six foot, 185 pound junior out of Cookville, Tennessee. He inherits a bit of a mess. He does. A couple of breakdowns defensively after those leadoff doubles by the Longhorns. It's helped Texas produce a three-run inning, and they're not done. And here's Faltini, who hit the long homer in the fifth. 
tie this game up at one apiece. Cooper with his fourth appearance of the season. He has three innings under his belt, and he's going to have one hit, four strikeouts, and a walk. He had 12 appearances a year ago and had a very good earn run average of 1.12 in limited innings. And the low 90s fastball has a hard curveball. Goes at the low 80s and a changeup. We know the offense that Tennessee has, but Mabry certainly has to clean this up here. Get them back in the dugout with only nine outs left to play with. Now keep them from adding to this lead or allowing this inning to balloon any further where this Tennessee offense might have a chance to come back like LSU did in that second game today. That's right. Texas pitching staff, as we talked about, .067 earned run average coming in. Good Pete pitch Hansen. to Faltini. Pete Hansen only giving up the home run in the fifth. Pretty tough when your team ERA goes up after only giving up one run. <laughs> Faltini's home run was a soaring shot landing in the Crawford boxes back in the fifth. This is swing and a miss there. Two outs in the inning. Oh, good job by Will Mabry coming in, throwing low strikes to Faltini. That's the key. Getting him out. Just keep the ball down in the zone. Austin Todd is the nine hole hitter. He struck out a couple of times, but trying to turn that around here. Do a little bit of damage. Staley at second, Messenger at first. The Tennessee catcher Evan Russell getting down using that uh, knee stance. Something to see a lot more catchers doing these days, getting down that knee, trying to provide a lower strike zone, lower target for the pitcher. You want to get a good baseball argument going with some old timers. Oh, yeah. Just bring up that topic. Exactly. He's all the way up. Not only is he on the knee, he's also kicking that left leg out, getting even lower. Let's provide a, a challenge when you're trying to block pitches. That's, I think, what the old timers argument is. How can you be mobile out of that stance? Staley darting around at second base. That one is up the middle, but fielded by the shortstop Lawson. And they're going to get the force at second base. Nice play from Cortland Lawson to end the inning. A frame that saw the Longhorns score three times. Get a little separation. 4-1, Texas. I need two bacon on bacon quarter pound double cheeseburgers. Coming right up. Can someone grab more bacon? We're going to need more of that tangy smoke sauce. Order up. Sonic bacon on bacon quarter pound double cheeseburger. Guys, we have an honorary teammate today. Her name is Alyssa. It's cool to have her. And Alyssa, we got you actually this jersey. So here you go. Shriners was really important for me because I found out I had scoliosis and I needed surgery. About a month later, we contacted the Shriners and they got me in for an appointment to have my surgery. She had had a growth spurt and all the growth basically came in curved. Her back started hurting. She was in pain all the time, she was tired, she had headaches. Um, so when we took her back for that next appointment, that's when they referred us to the specialist. You know, after learning a little bit about Shriners, you can just tell that they care about the people. You know, regardless of their ability to pay, they're there to be there for them. It's, it's awesome to know that they're out there they're doing, doing things like that. I think when you look at that teammate atmosphere, is really something that it seems like, that she kind of cherishes. And then to adopt her as a teammate with Texas and our baseball team is pretty cool. Shriners really does help everyone.
Get ready for 2022 by checking out the Astros team store in Union Station. Stop by Monday through Saturday for the latest Astros merchandise. Visit Astros.com slash team store for more information. 16,000 plus here tonight. Even bigger crowd coming tomorrow when LSU and Texas have the third game that I cap. This is a good one as well. Texas at one time trailing one nothing, now leading four to one, and Pete Hansen's day is done. Yeah, great job by Pete Hansen and everything that is advertised with him. The only downside to his outing was he gave up his first earned run of the year, but outstanding outing by Hansen. He gives way to Travis Staley. Staley off to a good start himself. Three appearances make this his fourth. Only six innings, three hits, six strikeouts, three walks. Hitters 150 against him. And Staley will bring the fastball low 90 slider and really true curveball and a changeup. He was talked about as a possibility for the weekend rotation or midweek starter for Texas. He really settled himself in as a kind of a piggyback type guy. If uh, you get a starter that goes five or six, Staley can certainly come in and close a game for you. Ortega, Dickey, and Russell, six, seven, and eight for the balls in the seventh. We know any time teams put up just incredible numbers over the first two weeks of the season, it has a chance to revert a bit to the mean when you see this tremendous competition over the course of three days here at Minute Maid, and that one's going to be back in, in the seats. But again, this Tennessee team came into tonight leading the country in runs per game at 15 plus total runs. Doubles, homers, slugging percentage, walks it on base percentage. And oh, by the way, they were fourth in batting average and 12th in hits, so they've pretty <laughs> much surrounded everything. Just some obscene numbers. Nice slider. Lands for a strike to Ortega. And Pete Hansen comes in and just pitches his game. That's uh, what we've seen with his career at Texas, and you know, those numbers didn't intimidate him. And Outside of the home run, that was it. Hooked on the ground to third. That's right over the base. Nope, it's a foul ball. Now, Messenger kicked it, so Texas probably fortunate. Just did take a U-turn. Otherwise, Ortega would have been on to start the inning. That was really close. And third base umpire Seth Buckminster immediately threw his hands up. And like uh, Messenger did want to make that play, though. Texas, the number one ranked team in the country against the sixth ranked Tennessee Volunteers. It shows you, though, baseball. I mean, there's no shortage of polls. In all the number of polls, I think there's six that Tennessee's anywhere between sixth and 17th. That's a pretty wide spread. I would say it is. <laughs> but regardless, if they can get a win tonight, you take down number one, Texas. It's the same thing. It just continues to build that RPI and builds that resume. You know once you get into conference play for Tennessee that every week is just an RPI enhancer. Oh, yeah. Especially the SEC. It's just a war every weekend. And even the teams at the bottom of the SEC have add to your RPI just because of the competition that they've played. You're just trying to get above 500. That's I mean, right. overall, then if you're close in the conference, maybe even a few games below, you have a chance to be a regional team. We mentioned LSU. They were four games below 500 in the SEC last year, but still able to get a berth in the region. Right. And what Tony Vitello has done in Knoxville is nothing short of amazing. And I think you touched on it earlier, Pat. We didn't get into it. I mean, you're in the same state with Vanderbilt for crying That's out right. loud. That's <laughs> right. You could have competed your own home area. And that one's down the line and right, and it's out of play. I mean, Vanderbilt loads up on so many top players, and they have several commitments of guys I'm not convinced won't be first-round picks. So then you've got to change things out with some other kids to take over some of those scholarships. But what a, in addition to that Eastern Division, we know the SEC West, that has Arkansas, Old Miss, 
the defending national champions in Mississippi State. Oh, yeah, LSU's still there. Texas A&M under Jim Schlossnick. But to add Tennessee to the east with Vanderbilt and Florida changes that outlook, too. Yeah, no doubt. It's uh, the thing that Tony went back to was saying, hey, we've got to recruit well in our backyard first. Let's make sure we keep the guys here that ought to be playing in the, in the volunteer uniform. And they'll start to spread out a bit. So, you know, he's done a great job recruiting the Midwest as well. And, but uh, they have uh, absolutely, Vitello has turned that program around in the sense of now becoming a perennial regional type team. Count's gone full to Ortega, and he's going to draw the walk. So that was a lengthy plate appearance, but the Volunteers get what they need a leadoff base runner. Now, I don't see this Tennessee program going anywhere other than to stay near the top. And, you know, if you can consistently be a winner in the SEC, you're going to compete for a right to go to Omaha just about every year. Yeah, you just look at the players in terms of uh, Fatello's resume. You know, he, uh, Garrett Crochet, first-round pick of the White Sox a couple of seasons ago. You had Eric Soler, second-round pick of the Twins. Chad Dallas, fourth-round pick of the Blue Jays. I mean, just go down the list. He's got, you know, draft pick after draft pick now, and so... It is a destination place for players in Tennessee and surrounding areas. Didn't Crochet go straight to the majors? That's right. Yeah. That's a small list. That's a small list. Here's Jared Dickey. And he rips one to right for a base hit. Ortega's going to turn at second and slam on the brakes. Played back in nicely by Austin Todd. And now the Longhorns are going to bring the tying run to the plate with nobody out. Yeah, ball was sharply hit off the bat of Dickey and got to Austin Todd quick enough that Ortega wisely slammed on the brakes there. Here's Evan Russell, who had a home run into the Crawford boxes in the fifth inning. Low liner that landed a couple of rows deep. And that was the game's first run. You sure wouldn't think that Russell would be bunting here. Not with Tennessee down three runs. Give him a chance to try to tie this game up. And I mentioned when he hit that home run back in the fifth, there was a guy last year had two different three homer games. So they do come in bunches. Three run homer here would tie things up. And a pretty good center cut fastball. First pitch delivery from Staley. 12 different Longhorns. 12 different volunteers, I should say, have homered this season. Russell's blast in the fifth inning, his third. And he sees the count even at one and one. So the starters are out of this game. Turn things over to the bullpen, and the way these starters pitched, just about every hitter in both lineups thinking, well, I'll take my cracks I'll and see it. if I can do a little better. That's it. Almost instant replay of the uh, of the previous game, LSU and OU. Both starters extremely good in that game, and then the bullpens took over, and that's when things got interesting. Nobody out in the seventh for Tennessee. Staley ready in his pitch. And that'll be out of play as it bends towards the seats down the line in right. And here's a guy in Russell, and we talked about his success last year, but as a catcher, Troy, Tony Vitello feels like he sacrificed some swings in order to build up that rapport with the pitchers, learning this position. A good swing there for strike three. Great pitch by Staley. That's the sacrifice a catcher makes, though. Sometimes you're worried about your defensive game as much as you are your offensive game. And especially making that conversion from outfield to catcher, it's it's a lot different. And uh, you, you've got to obviously think about the, the amount of work and effort it takes to to catch and the amount of fatigue it, it can have over your you know over the course of a season with your body, but. Yeah, so far early on, Evan Russell doing a great job handling the duties and still swinging the bat well. 
Cortland Lawson, the batter, shortstop of the nine hole. Singled in his last at bat in the fifth. Boy, he's generous on the eye black tonight, isn't he? <laughs> I mean, that thing's caked on that face. How long it takes to get that off? <laughs> <laughs> Might be there the whole weekend. His pillows will be a mess in the hotel. Sleep it. Yeah, there you go. I would say he lathered that up pretty good, just in case the sunshine pops back through the clouds here at the crack of 10:45 p.m. <laughs> that's the war paint. I'm, I'm sure that's what it is. It has nothing to do with the sunlight. No, it's it's, it's all about paint. <laughs> the style, the look. Brakeman called it the show hair. What do you, what do you call this? The, the show face. <laughs> Might be. <laughs> Two balls and no strikes, and the pitch to Lawson. Now it's three and a. And if you're Staley, you really don't want to walk the nine-hole hitter only to turn this lineup over with the bases juiced. Yeah, it gets uh, really difficult at the top. And got uh, Lipsius, Beck, Gilbert coming up. Uh, that, that could get tough. Walk single strikeout so far in the Tennessee seven. Good pitch for a strike. 91 of the gun, and there is activity going in that Texas bullpen. Ground ball to third. Messenger backed up, and the ball kicks away. A run will score, and the Volunteers have runners at second and third. And both teams have mishandled some ground balls where maybe there was a chance to get two. Yeah, that was a play that uh, Skylar Messenger definitely gets an out at third base. He's had a chance to turn two here. It probably would have been difficult to do that, but certainly if he keeps the ball in the infield, I'm going to call that a base hit. It's certainly a ball that Messenger could have played and knocked down at least and kept the ball in front of him for a chance at an out of play out at third base. Looked like our umpire Seth Buckminster threw his hands up in the air. He was trying to get out of the way. He was trying to point fair. At the same time, almost looked like he was saying foul ball, but all of a sudden this is a 4-2 game and the tying runs are in scoring position. Now David Pierce out to make a visit with his pitcher Travis Staley. First in relief of Pete Hansen. David Pierce is going to leave him in. Longhorns have a couple of pitchers ready when needed. Well, both sides ready to go and. David Pierce will elect to stay with Staley here. Tennessee a chance to tie this game up with a hit. Seth Stevenson, the leadoff hitter, is 0 for 3. Infield playing halfway. Big strike for Travis Staley to start this sequence. Now Faltini backs up at short, as will Mitch Daly at second. So it looks like Texas will concede the run here if Stevenson can put the ball in play. It's a pretty good pitch to hit. Yeah, fastball that uh, caught a pretty good chunk of the plate there. Staley pitching him backwards, started him off with the breaking pitch. Now Stevenson looking just to put something in play. And Staley would really love a strikeout. Arduan sets up outside and that pitch not close. Stevenson would not help out. Staley with a chase. Longhorns had three runs in the sixth inning to get a little bit of separation. Tennessee has responded with a run in the seventh. And two more men out there in scoring position. No.
Another big pitch in this inning. Buried again. A good hold by Stevenson. Hits the count even. Staley trying to use that curveball to get the out. Stevens is not biting on it. From 0-2 to 2-2. And, and it'll find its way back towards the seats and be about 10 or 12 rows up. And out of play. Fights off the elevated fastball. And it's always the key as a hitter is get down on the count, two-strike approach. You just don't want to be early on the breaking pitch. You want to try to swing as late as you can. You have to foul off the fastball. That's the key. Try to keep those hands back as long as you possibly can. This has turned into quite the battle. Straight up the shoot. Arduan, is he going to have a play? I think he is. That's a huge second out. Sure is. Huge out. Infield can play back now. David Pierce is going to go to the left-hander. Face Lipsius and Staley did his job just to keep that ball in the infield and not allow a sack fly. Strange inning and it's not done. Tennessee's pushed across a run. And the tying runs out there in scoring position, but a pitching change will be made. We'll step aside here at Minute Maid, the nightcap of day one of the Shriners College Classic, a 4 2 Longhorn leap. I feel like they've just shh, 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 ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> you say ASMR. <laughs> We're pulling internet out of your room. Sonic Double Stuff Oreo Waffle Cone and Blast. <laughs> You're getting cut off. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Wow. Perfect. I think red is more me. Giddy up. Did you know that every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care? A two-year or 25,000-mile maintenance plan and roadside assistance. That's the value you can expect from Toyota. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. Behold, unlimited wireless for only 30 bucks. That's pretty cool, but you know what's cooler? Saving up to 400 bucks. Exactly. And if we really want to take it up a notch, get all that and nationwide 5G included. Ooh, nice shot. Send that to me. I got you. Break free from the big three and get connected to the nation's most reliable 5G network. Get the new Samsung Galaxy S22 series on Xfinity Mobile. And right now, save big with up to $750 off a new Samsung device. Switch today. Oh, uh, here it go. Okay. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Longhorns have gone to the bullpen. Bring on their third pitcher of the game. It's a left-hander, Luke Harrison. Harrison, a 6'2", 175-pound freshman out of Frenchwood. Been pretty solid for the Horns so far. You see the stat line in six innings. He's yet to give up an earned run. Features a mid to upper 80s fastball. Won't blow you away with it, but that curveball's really good. It's high spin rate curveball. A lot of good bite to it. Coming a specialist in late in the bullpen here for David Pierce's Longhorns. Young man at a Lutheran South Academy. Again, chance to pitch against Rice A&M Corpus Christi in Alabama. Now he enters a game at Minute Maid. His team leading by two enters at second and third and Luke Lipsius the batter. Now he's 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. A sixth year senior. It's already graduated with a degree in aerospace engineering. Oh, he's <laughs> one of those guys. <laughs> so they just thought, why don't I just stick around and play another year of college baseball? Hit 15 home runs last season. Beautiful pitch to start with strike one from Harrison. Well, Lipsius off to a tremendous start this year. 
of his eight hits, four for doubles and a home run. A lot of pop in that stroke. Would Tony V tell us it looks like he's 40? <laughs> <laughs> Plays like he's in Little League. Looks like he's 40. we we'll just miss that one. Sends one well foul down the line and left. Bendy going to play. He's going to expand the strike zone now. He's got rung up on a couple of pitches that were, in his mind, tough pitches. Two outs, two on, two strikes. How about that pitch? That was painted. Lipsy is not so sure. Volunteers get a run. Straight at double the minute scoring position. Stretch time for a minute made. This K ends the inning. I don't think I can do this. You said you wanted to feel the power of cricket 5G. I thought you meant like live streaming. Oh, we're live streaming, all right. Let's roll. <laughs> Smile, you're on cricket. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. If you could see you through my eyes instead of your ego. I believe you'd be surprised to see that you've been blind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Yeah, before you abuse, criticize and accuse. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize and accuse. Walk a mile in my shoes. H-Town High School Sports. The excitement, the emotion, the passion. Only on H-Town High School Sports with Todd Free. See it right here on AT&T Sportsnet. It remains a 4-2 Texas lead. We saw the replay of strike three to Luke Lipsius as we went to break, and I don't blame him maybe for being a little bit fired up. <laughs> well, it's been happened a couple of times to tonight, isn't it? To him. Yeah. In a critical situation like that, it's a tough call. But you know, you, if you've had it call on you before, you have to expect that that strike zone's got to be expanded and you know, at least do whatever you can to put the bat on the ball. Douglas Hilda the third with the bunt, and he's got himself a hit. He was over for three with a couple of K, so he was going to get on base, and he does so with a bunt single. Yeah, beautifully done. I mean, just a perfect bunt. Nothing Tennessee could do with that. Good angle. Got the pitch he needed. Well done. Eric Kennedy, the batter. He doubled to begin last inning. Kick started that three run frame. He's going to bunt. Back to the mound. Should be an out at first and in. When's the last time you saw back to back bunts in a game? Yeah, that's uh, Texas small ball, though. You get yep. this late in the game, and they're going to move runners around, and that's been their MO. And what I like about that sacrifice situation, you see guys called upon to bunt, they give it away, they can't get it down, they foul one off. He just got up there, dropped it down, move just along. Do your job. <laughs> Set the table for <laughs> Ivan Melendez. Eric Kennedy understands that uh, that job very well. Pitch had a lot of movement away from the right-handed hitting Melendez. Who got an RBI double last inning. Provided the second run of the game for Texas. These teams played last year in Omaha. Texas took down Tennessee eight to four. And it's a four-two lead here tonight. We've seen a lot of action in the last couple of innings of our first two games. Baylor a run better than UCLA this morning. Took 11 innings and four and a half hours for LSU to defeat Oklahoma 5-4. 
A couple of one run games and this is uh, kind of looking like another one. It's shaping up to be. Might be on to something. Lefty's 1-1. One, one. Will Mabry misses and his two balls and a strike. Well, Mabry and the Volunteers have to be thinking you fall behind in the count to Melendez. You're certainly not going to give in. Hit foul outside of third where David Pierce coaches. And Hey, not every head coach coaches third base anymore. Yeah, not many. Andrew Pierce says he just enjoys being in the flow of the game. He, he sees the field, likes to call the plays there from third base, has the wristband, signals plays to his hitters and runners, the flashing number signs. I've heard more and more head coaches talk about how they like to be in the dugout for any number of reasons. That one's gripped to left. Back towards the Crawford boxes, off the wall, and how about that? Minute Maid Park ricochet like a pinball machine in the Titanic start for three. Safe. Melendez took advantage of every inch of real estate at Minute Maid Park. His blazing speed got him a triple. <laughs> well, that ball rattles around there. It's so difficult for left fielder. In this case, Seth Stevenson trying to figure out which angle to play. Does that ball hit off the Crawford wall, or does it go into that gap towards the bullpen area? And that's exactly what happened. It hit three different portions of different walls before it hit the ground. That's what sometimes you get with this, uh, just a nuance of left center field here in Minute Maid Park. So it hits the side of the Crawford boxes, ricochets off the screen link fence, and then off the pillar, and then rolls back towards the Crawford boxes. And that time, even Ivan Melendez could get a triple. <laughs> Expecting the machine to go tilt. <laughs> yeah, great, great job of two strike hitting again by Melendez. Certainly don't want to take anything away from his at bat, what he was able to accomplish there and boost that Texas lead back up to three runs. And that'll be it for Will Mabry. So a bunt single, a sacrifice, and a triple by Melendez. He's made it a 5-2 Longhorn lead. We'll step aside. Come back with a new Tennessee pitcher in a moment. Oh, here go. Okay. The Royal Caribbean. It's confirmed. He's packing up and heading to Los Angeles next season. Wow. Let me down easy. Miami is losing their star player. Oh. Ouch. This is going to rock the Western Conference. Why? We can't stop him from being traded, but we can help you trade in his jersey. With Amex Jersey Assurance, card members can get a free replacement jersey from the NBA store when their favorite player switches teams. One of the many things you can expect when you're with Amex. Every road has its challenges. We say, bring them on. At Honda, we engineer each vehicle to outthink obstacles to overcome difficult conditions. We engineer them for drivers who are determined to power through, just like you are. Rise to the challenge with the rugged performance of the Honda Ridgeline, Pilot, and CRV. With Panera's You Pick 2, every meal is made fantastic. You can be fresh and fun, bold and classic cozy and precocious with 465 fresh clean craveable pairings find a you pick two for any mood enjoy a one dollar delivery fee when you order on our app new genesee pitcher is ethan smith comes on with his team trailing five to two in the seventh uh, smith a transfer from vanderbilt six two Senior in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. 
Well, he was called upon to try to stop the bleeding here in the seventh inning. Texas already running the board. And now Smith in relief of Mabry. You know, Melendez did have three triples a year ago. Probably none as unique as that one. Ricocheting off every <laughs> wall out there in left center. Well, he moves pretty well for a big man. He was smelling a three base hit. That'll really come into play if he has a chance to score. This pop up would not help, but Lipsius is out of real estate. Each team with seven hits, but the Longhorns own a 5 2 advantage. Texas trying to start this season 10 0. Infield in now. And that pitch bends down and out. Big leg kick and the pitches. The fastball upstairs at 90. And the count's gone full to Mitchell Daly, who walked and scored just an inning ago. Here's the payoff. That's ball four. So the base runners continue for the Texas Longhorns. Smith went back to the curveball. That's his out pitch, but not able to control it in the zone. Silas Arduan will be the hitter. Reached on a fielder's choice and scored last inning. The son of Danny. It was a fifth round pick of the Oakland Athletics way back in 1995 and had 15 years of pro ball five of those in the majors. But also a Louisiana native you think he might be looking forward to tomorrow night. <laughs> That's right Going up against LSU. No doubt. This place is going to be rocking. It was a year ago when they had that event in Arlington and I think you were there to kick off the season. Arkansas went 3 0 against some top notch teams, but they pretty much opened up Globe Life and said, Come one, come all. And you had some huge crowds of 16, 17,000, which at the time seemed like 80,000 compared to what we were coming sure off did, of yeah. all the reduced capacity. Well, still with all the COVID protocols in place, it did. It felt uh, it was immense. It was loud. The ballpark was really loud and had the roof closed. Outstanding weekend of baseball. and. I'd have a bigger crowd than that tomorrow. Arduan sends one to deep center. Gilbert still running. My goodness, that was a journey to get back to shy of the track. And Gilbert makes the catch, but Melendez will tag and score. And it's a four-run Texas lead. That ball was crushed to center field and one want to make it a bid for extra bases, but Drew Gilbert tracks it down finally. Deep right center. Plenty enough distance for Melendez to get home, and Arduan does the job, picks up the sack fly. Longhorns did not score in the first four innings. Got a run in the fifth. That was the home run from Faltini. Three runs in the sixth. Two runs home here in the seventh. Pretty good example of what this Texas team does. Pat, they get guys on base. They put some pressure on the pitchers, string together some hits, take advantage of your mistakes, and all of a sudden you look up and you think, we can't score that many runs against their pitch. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. And why Texas has been so successful here early in this campaign. Mo well, gets just far enough away from Russell for Daly to advance. Well, Texas scores three or four runs. It feels like it's seven or eight because of that pitching stuff. Oh, that's a good point. You kind of have to grade on the curve as far as how many runs you can give up to a Texas team, especially on a weekend series where you know you're going to get their three big guns one after another. Right. Murphy Staley is one for three and he singled in his first at bat trying to pick up Daly from second who advanced on that wild pitch. There's another one in the dirt knocked down by Russell. Yeah, Smith having trouble with location of curveball and that's a pitch he really needs to have. Needs a strike. Couldn't land that one either. Three and
That'd be a generous strike called on 3-0, and but Volunteers will take it. The 3-1 from Ethan Smith he locates that one as well. So he's gone from 3-0 to 3-2. And and kind of get me over slider. Effective enough. Staley sitting all over the fastball there. And On the ground, up the middle, in the center. Base hit. Staley's going to drive home daily. Chance for an out at third or second, and that will end the inning. That's another three-run frame, however, for the Texas Longhorns. Yeah, outstanding offensive production here by the Horns. They blow this game open. Score their seventh run here in the seventh. Just a couple of outs, a couple of innings for Tennessee to come back. I'm over comedy. I just want to get in more dramatic roles. Eric, you don't have any dramatic work to show them. Yeah, but I got the new Galaxy S22 Ultra on Verizon 5G Ultra Wideband. It's got amazing video on a crazy fast network. I can film whatever I want. Can you cry on command? No. But I can download the notebook really fast. <laughs> can you film me while I'm crying? Now at Verizon, buy the Galaxy S22 Ultra and get the S22 Plus on us. 5G Ultra Wideband, now in many more cities. With Panera's You Pick 2, every meal is made fantastic. You can be fresh and fun, bold and classic, cozy and precocious. With 465 fresh, clean, craveable pairings, find a You Pick 2 for any mood. Enjoy a $1 delivery fee when you order on our app. Dion, hand it over. Now, how does that make you feel? Like a part of me is missing. Gabrielle? This Old Spice Fiji Hand and Body Lotion has me smoother than ever. That's what it does. Big moments. The best fans. Feel the excitement and don't miss a moment. Astros 2022 season tickets are on sale now. Astros.com slash season tickets. Coverage of the Shriners Children's Classic is brought to you by Visit Las Vegas. What happens here only happens here. Vegas doesn't even crank up till about 11.15 at night, but we're in the eighth inning of this game. And a new pitcher as well for the Texas Longhorns, Jared Southern comes on. Jared Southern becomes the fourth Longhorn pitcher of the evening. Pretty good numbers to start the season. In his third appearance, only an inning in a third, but up one hit, three strikeouts, one walk. Six twos, red shirt sophomore from Leander, Texas. Tennessee down to its final six outs. Trilling now seven to two. Feels like a safe lead, but uh, Brett, we know better. We know better. Yeah, especially with this Tennessee lineup and this guy Jordan Beck, who has absolutely laced three lasers. Unfortunately for him, two of them have been caught in the outfield. Good point. Singled in the first, and then he's hit a couple of rockets towards Hodo, and hasn't been able to, able to escape his reach. Three, four, and five do up for the balls in the eighth inning. And Southern able to start with a strike. I believe he's the fourth pitcher for Texas and the eighth we've seen in this game. Seems like over the course of a three game weekend series and this is a little bit unique in the sense that these teams are playing a different opponent every day. Sometimes in that Friday game you bring your pitchers in with strategy and on Sunday it's out of desperation. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's uh, 
last man standing oftentimes in that bullpen when you get to Sunday. But this, this competition this weekend, I think you're seeing a lot of pitching changes and a matchup related. You're also seeing, uh, you know, still at this young point in the season, a lot of head coaches still trying to figure out the pieces of the bullpen. Who's going to have which roles and I think that's an ongoing question mark for the first month or so. And maybe you give yourself really that leeway until you get right up to about to conference play. You really like to have things set up by then. I think that's the goal that uh, most head coaches here at the D1 level have is let's at least try to get guys comfortable in those roles before we get to conference play. Of course, you get the occasional slow starter. It's ball four to back. Just need a couple of weeks to kind of get it going in competition, but. Well, Tony Vitello knows with his offense that a recipe for getting back into a game is some free base runners. And Tennessee often takes advantage of the freebies and they have piled up the runs so far early this season. Texas pitching staff doing what we pretty much expected, just kind of pounding the zone and letting that defense work. Here's Gilbert. I've got a kick out of Coach Vitello talking about Gilbert when he said he's a bit of a Lenny Dykstra, a psycho on the field. <laughs> just a great guy off the field, but he plays what he claims is about 100 miles an hour. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good description. That's what Lenny did. And, was my former teammate. He always uh, had a bit of a, an edge, an edge to him. But you know, as a, as a teammate, you had a little bit of anxiety when he'd go after crashing into walls, trying to you know catch balls, and it seemed like he was diving everywhere. And just thought that just the wear and tear in his body was going to catch up. Even Tony said that you can't be angry 24/7. Yeah, right. You play the game angry, but to a point. But you got to love a guy that uh, has that type of passion and energy and it uh, typically lifts the room when you, you talk about the locker room and the leadership when Drew Gibbert walks in it's uh, a little bit more serious Minnesota native playing his college baseball in Tennessee well, after the leadoff walk and Southern is misfired on three in a row to Drew Gilbert I think this is how David Pierce threw it up in his mind when he brought Southern out of the bullpen I don't think it's uh, <laughs> well, Jared Souther drew it up either. And he dials in a strike when he needs one. And he needs a couple more as well. Yeah, 94 in the outside corner. Well, Gilbert sitting dead fastball here. Three one pitch. Big wave and a miss. Got the fastball. It was up, but he swung through it. it might have been up out of the strike zone for him. And it's so enticing. Those hitters sit that on that pitch. They, they might get uh, one center cut fastball the entire game and certainly don't want to let it go. How about Beck off and running? The pitch hits Gilbert. That's two free base runners. So that five run lead no longer looking quite as large as the volunteers build towards possibility of doing some damage with one big swing. Second at bat in a row that Gilbert's took taking a pitch on that arm. To bring Sean Allen out of the dugout. Gilbert's been on base all four times and he has one at bat. And if you're Texas, you certainly don't want to go to the pin again. You, you really are trying to save arms for the next couple of days. Get the 7-2 lead, and at this point, you're really asking Jared Southern to get uh, get back into that zone. Sean Allen with the mound conversation. We have a fundraising gold all weekend for Shriners Hospitals. Right now, we've jumped it up to 20%, so we want to see that number continue to grow over the course of these nine games in three days, and we're at 20%. So go to College Classic 
org to contribute. Conversation is over, and this is Trey Lipscomb. And it's hard to say about somebody hitting 533 with five homers at the beginning of the night, but he's due because he's over he three due. today. <laughs> well, certainly be his first O for the season, but uh, here's the guy that volunteers won at this situation. One swing of the bat, make it 7 5. If you're Trey Lipscomb, you've got to be thinking that direction. Beck at second, Gilbert at first. And all of a sudden, Southern continues just to misfire on the first few pitches in these sequences to the hitters. David Pierce has seen enough, so after a mound visit just two pitches ago, as much as I'm sure he would like to keep Southern in the game and not just continue to burn through relievers, I don't think he feels like he has a choice right now. Yeah, you can't give in to Lipscomb here either. It's this game could get quite interesting if you go back and try to pump a fastball in the middle. It's a rough night for Southern, but it'll be the fifth Pitching chance for a pitcher. We'll tell you more about it when we get back. Behold, unlimited wireless for only 30 bucks. That's pretty cool, but you know what's cooler? Saving up to 400 bucks. Exactly. And if we really want to take it up a notch, get all that and nationwide 5G included. Ooh, nice shot. Send that to me. I got you. Break free from the big three and get connected to the nation's most reliable 5G network. Get the new Samsung Galaxy S22 series on Xfinity Mobile. And right now, save big with up to $750 off a new Samsung device. Switch today. Dang, son. This bacon is just hanging out of this burger, dog. That nice, tangy, smoked sauce. The bacon on this burger is just asking me to eat it. You should oblige. Sonic bacon on bacon, quarter pound double cheeseburger. Are you sweating? Didn't you use Old Spice dry spray? Of course I did. Don't lie to me! Old Spice has long-lasting sweat protection! <laughs> okay, I lied. Uh. No matter who you are, and actually no matter what the year of car you, you're driving, there's nothing like the Sewell customer service. Everything is seamless, and everything is well calculated, well thought out, I would love to think that it's just me, but I know that they do this for every customer. I'm a soil customer for life. Discover our wide variety of new and certified pre-owned vehicles at Sewell Cadillac. Well, the Longhorns have gone to the bullpen, had to bring on their closer, Aaron Nixon, with nobody out in this eighth inning. Yeah, that was not the game plan after Texas broke up with the five-run lead here in the previous inning. I'm sure and, uh, David Pierce's mind would love to save Aaron Nixon for tomorrow or Sunday, but Nixon on to get the save. Well, not a safe situation yet. He has been absolutely unhittable to start this 22 season. Off a great 21 campaign as well. But since low 90s of the fastball, but it's the slider that's just absolutely devastating. One of the best sliders you'll see in college baseball. He's going to inherit a 2 0 count to Lipscomb. The Calvin native is Aaron Nixon. Nothing like being a closer as a true freshman on a College World Series team a year ago. Nine saves on the year. Not a safe situation. Trying to find a way to take down Tennessee and give them their first loss of the year. Not so fast. That one socked out to left. Kennedy back. That's a second play like that he's made tonight. Well, he's playing left field like he owns it. My goodness. <laughs> like he's been here a few times, but you know, that running catch by Eric Kennedy. And talk about the speed of this Texas outfield and the jumps that they get on balls. And that ball was scorched off the bat of Lipscomb. And could have easily been a double had Kennedy not taken the right angle. And just like that, one pitch for Nixon, one out. It's a good thing he doesn't have to Texas. throw. Did you see that hand all bandaged up, his throwing hand?
might make for a unique throw. <laughs> <laughs> we had heard that uh, Kennedy had I think made contact with the wall in Austin. What was it over the weekend? And bounced back pretty well from that. Ortega will pop it up. Not a lot of room in foul territory behind the plate, and that'll be just behind the Longhorns' dugout. And here, Nixon's fifth appearance this season. Already a couple of saves. Here in 22. He had three hits over four and two thirds. Six strikeouts, three walks. And Pat, after pitching so much last year and successfully, then he went off and joined the USA Baseball Collegiate National Team. That's a full year. That is a full year. Not much rest. I know Texas didn't uh, throw him a ton in the fall. Pulled slider? the string. Yeah, My goodness. That's just a nasty pitch. Great command of it. He can throw that slider any time, any count. I trust pitch for him. See if he throws it again. Pick play at first. Not in time. The Longhorns thought they had to strike him out, pick him off, double play. We have seen some bizarre plays at first. It's not often you get a chance to pick on a strikeout. And the Longhorns saying they might request a review. How about that snap throw by Silas Hardwan from the plate? Melendez with a quick tag, and Melendez thinks he got Drew Gilbert. And Texas will challenge the call at first base, and this will be the third challenge of the game. Gilbert had ventured pretty far off that bag, so once Arduan put that throw on the money, there's a possibility of a pick off, and obviously Texas thought. That should have been the call. We'll find out. Yeah, swing and the miss by Ortega. A quick throw. Awfully close. Melendez did a pretty good job almost blocking the base there. Yeah. And I don't think he's trying to do it. He's just trying to get back, find the base, and accept the throw. And I even wonder if it's uh, going back to what we saw earlier. Seems like a decade ago, but it was just earlier in the day when we saw LSU first baseman Trey Morgan get caught for obstruction. So the pickoff was negated. He was given an error on the play. That's right. And then Jay Johnson filed a protest. And that particular play, you wonder if that's what we're looking at here with Melendez trying to find the bag and his foot. It was uh, right in front of the bag where Gilbert was trying to slide back in. Not sure there's a great angle with which to work on this play. So Nixon will continue to throw as he waits for the judgment of this replay review. And one more look at it. That's not going to help. Yeah, that's a better angle. Looks like Melendez was straddling the bag. I don't think there was any obstruction there, but call is going to stand. It's just not a good look to possibly overturn that call of safe. This inning will continue with a couple of base runners and two outs. Aaron Nixon comes on and quickly gets two outs after Tennessee had threatened with a walk and a hit batter to start the inning. Jared Dickey single last inning. One for three in the game. Tennessee's been out hit eight to seven, but they trail seven to two. Got a 
piece of our plate umpire Michael Durantis. That was a thud echoing it around was. this ballpark. Like it bounced off the back foot. The hitter Dickey then popped up and caught Durantis on the arm. He's ready to go. Arduan went out to the mound to give him just a few extra seconds to uh, gather himself. He, he's showing Arduan where it hit him. <laughs> he was pointing to his chin. I'm not sure if it came up and got him under the mask. I thought it caught the arm, but. Uh, Is it yeah, a double ricochet? Double ricochet, yeah. Next pitch to Dickey. Crossed him up. <laughs> Hard one looking at his pitcher like, uh, it's supposed to be a slider. <laughs> he was lucky to catch that. Yeah, that uh, that's a great catcher back there. Can recognize the spin off that pitch and quickly make the adjustment. How about Nixon taking off his cap and looking into his cap? Some sign relayed in that he had to check out? I think so. That's exactly what they do is they put the series of signs underneath the cap. Just make sure they're on the same page here. Nice pick by Erdogan. He's seen a little bit of everything from being crossed up to playing the ball in a short hop. Yeah, that was a tough play. That, that pitch is bouncing in front of the plate. And the catcher has to make that split second decision. Do I try to backhand this and just try to knock it down with my glove? Or try to square it up? And that time Arduan made the right decision. Just went to the backhand. Might be time for one of those Nixon sliders. He threw it, but somehow Dickey was able to get a piece and serve it foul to stay alive. Hard to make contact. Yeah, that was the way it was dropping. It was headed towards the dirt. Dickey just able to get a piece of it. Another one two. And that pitch not close, elevated. Two balls, two strikes. Tennessee got their first two base runners aboard in the eighth with a walk and a hit batter. And then Nixon came into the game inheriting a 2 0 count to Lipscomb. Got the line out to left, then a strikeout of Ortega. A count two and two to Dickey. Just missing. So now the count's gone full. These runners will be able to take off early on the payoff. Yeah, good take by Dickey. That ball didn't miss by much. He's seen every pitch that Nixon's thrown, and that's a good idea what that slider spin looks like. It's still tough to pick up, but you've seen a few of them. Nixon comes set. Runners take off. The payoff missed. Three free base runners for the Volunteers in the eighth. And one swing can't tie this up, but they're getting awfully close to making things interesting. And if they could launch one out of Minute Maid. Especially with this hitter, Evan Russell, who's already done it tonight. Russell singled and homered his homer in the fifth inning. Put Tennessee in front, one nothing. Smash line drive that ended up a couple of rows deep in the Crawford boxes. So all of a sudden, Nixon, after looking really good through a couple of hitters and getting ahead of Dickey, lost Dickey with a walk, and he misfires on the first one to Evan Russell. By the way, this is a pretty dangerous hitter to be batting eighth in any lineup. And how many times you see a guy with this kind of power? And really, with the start of the year he's had. In the game, batting 300. And the six hits, five for extra bases. No place to put Evan Russell. Base is full of volunteers. 
It's fouled back in our direction. Fastball up in the zone and in the middle in. Just enough in to tie Russell up. Not a bad pitch to hit. Long run fans have been trying to will their team out of the center, out of the stretch. Leaned on the slider, Pat. That's the signature pitch. Aaron Nixon nails it. Guess the Horns had a trouble here in the eighth inning. They lead 7 2. Watch me. Watch me shine with every snap. Born to move fans, to cheer and clap. Two different legs, that's how I play. One built from science to help me on the deck. Between these lines, I'm all heart and muscle. Don't stare too long, you'll miss the hustle. Watch me. Pioneers in prosthetic technology at Schreiner's Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. It's confirmed he's packing up and heading to Los Angeles next season. Wow. Down easy. Miami is losing their star player. Oh. Ouch. This is going to rock the Western Conference. Why? We can't stop him from being traded, but we can help you trade in his jersey. With Amex Jersey Assurance, card members can get a free replacement jersey from the NBA store when their favorite player switches teams. One of the many things you can expect when you're with Amex. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Wow. Perfect. I think red is more me. Giddy up. Did you know that every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care? A two-year or 25,000-mile maintenance plan and roadside assistance. That's the value you can expect from Toyota. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. Longhorns ready to bat in the bottom of the eighth. Tennessee has gone to the bullpen. Mark McLaughlin, junior right-hander out of Georgia, comes on to pitch. A couple of innings of work so far this year with five strikeouts. Yeah, the 6-3 junior from Johns Creek, Georgia. Making his third appearance of the season. Giving up an earned run. That becomes the fifth Tennessee pitcher. Which team has used five? And for these Longhorns, they were able to get on the board in the fifth inning with a Faltini homer. And then Texas scored three runs in the sixth and three more in the seventh to build up this lead. Messenger will lead off, followed by Faltini and Austin Todd. Messenger singled in a run back in the sixth. The transfer rule in all of college sports is an interesting one, but to be able to have immediate eligibility to transfer within your own conference for a guy like Messenger to be in the Big 12, albeit at a different destination in Kansas, and all of a sudden you're on the number one team in the nation. You're playing at a big league ballpark. There's 16,000 fans here. It's got to feel a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, not a bad trade for Skylar Messenger. He's thankful about the uh, transfer portal. Yeah, I certainly understand it. It's a grad transfer as well in his yep. case. He's going to take strike three. McLaughlin able to pick up a strikeout, the first batter that he faces. A good curveball from McLaughlin, that low 90s fastball. Got ahead with it against Messenger and finishes him off with that tight spin curveball. Here's Trey Faltini. He launched a home run into the edge of the Crawford boxes back in the fifth. His second home run of the year. Pretty good fastball to start the sequence against Faltini, coming at 93. Trey certainly has a lot of athleticism at five home runs last year. 
hit 249. And Pat, if that's a number that he can jump up, say 20 points, with what he can do defensively, if he's closer to a 270, 280 hitter than 249, it really bode well for his professional stock. Well, sure would. He's already seen as a very athletic, capable shortstop. And Diving effort by Gilbert in center, but he can't come up with it. That's another rocket that Faltini has hit, and he gets the single. His second hit of the game. That one hurt for Gilbert. He's yeah. getting up, shaking off the cobwebs. Did he do a face plan as well? Did he? Yeah, I was looking for that. That's lay out. Uh, seems to be shaking his head pretty good, but. Let's take another look. Yeah, head did hit pretty hard. Mm. He's a tough dude. He's gotten hit twice and then now <laughs> bangs his head on the turf. That's yeah, been a painful night. And here's Austin Todd, who's a guy coming back off a shoulder injury. Hitless in three at bats. Hard to believe for a guy like Austin Todd, and we talked about the transfer portal, how unique that is. But Todd is such a veteran that this year it was the sixth consecutive opening day start. <laughs> is that, I, I know incredible. it's possible because it yeah. happened. Well, he gets uh, ribbed all the time in, in the clubhouse for being, uh, you know, around for so long, but you know, they drop a grandpa on him every so, you know, so often in the clubhouse. It does, seems like he's been here forever. It's one thing to be on a team, maybe there's an injury year, or, you know, we all know about the COVID year, but to start on opening day for six straight years, it's gonna wave and miss. So a couple of strikeouts for McLaughlin. We'll turn the lineup over for Douglas Hodo the third. He started off that seventh inning in which Texas scored three runs, dropped down the bunt hit. The next batter was Kennedy, dropped down the sacrifice. Before you know it, Melendez had an RBI triple. Ardwan had a sack fly. Staley had a run scoring single. Fultini really scrambling to get back into the base. Yeah, and Hodo kind of started that seventh inning up with just that fairly innocent bunt down the third baseline. That was his first hit of the night. But, uh, got the uh, energy moving in the dugout. Got the runners moving around the bases. Pitch at 92 for a strike. Sacrifice from Kennedy moved things along as well. And, you know, we talk about the home runs and the runs in college baseball, but this was a team that had 51 sacrifice bunts last year. That was in the top six or seven in the country. Lopla looking sharp. He wants to finish strong and end this inning. Get his team up there in the ninth. Faltini has not attempted to steal this season. But McLaughlin's trying to keep him close. That's a rip and a miss. That was three strikeouts for McLaughlin in the eighth. Looked around a single. On we go to the ninth inning. Last chance for the Volunteers. This is you, right? Like, you're like, mm, bacon, bacon, bacon. Well, this is you. Oh, I love bacon. Sonic bacon on bacon, quarter pound double cheeseburger. Okay, you got me. Oh. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. If you could see you through my eyes instead of your ego. I believe you'd be surprised to see that you've been blind. Walk a mile in my shoes. 
Walk a mile in my shoes. Yeah, before you abuse, criticize and accuse. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize and accuse. Walk a mile in my shoes. Take your favorite teams with you with the brand new AT&T Sportsnet mobile app. Just download the free app from iTunes or Google Play, log in with your TV provider account info, and you're all set. Don't wait. Download the new and improved AT&T Sportsnet mobile app today. Aaron Nixon came on in the eighth inning. A couple of base runners aboard and got the final three outs. Now he's back here in the ninth looking to shut the door and Give the Texas Longhorns a 10-0 start to 2022. Yeah, well, he was something had to give tonight with both these teams coming in undefeated. Right now, Texas with the upper hand, and certainly feels like uh, an Aaron Nixon closeout, but he gets to face this powerful Tennessee lineup. Cortland Lawson will lead off, then back to the top of the lineup with Stevenson and Lipsius. Tennessee did have a 1-0 lead back in the fifth on the Russell home run. But Texas has built up this five-run cushion. Lawson's got a couple of base hits out of the nine hole. Well, that slider is something else. I almost feel like it pauses for a split second before it continues <laughs> on. It's unhittable. When he keeps it down in the zone like that, it's just a devastating pitch. Ground ball to short. Faltini will charge and throw on the run. That was nifty. One shortstop takes care of the other. One out. Ninth inning. Yeah, Faltini is so athletic at that position and just makes it look so smooth and easy. And it's really not that easy of a position. <laughs> it just makes it look easy. He's had a good night. Stray Faltini. That ball almost popped out of his glove, and I think he was telling his double play teammate that it just about squirted out of the, there you go. the bottom. Hit the part of that palm and popped up on him. Just about. That's good hands when you can have a ball stick there and you don't kick it. Yeah, that's exactly right. That ball easily pops out of your glove and Goes down as an error. Soft hands. Stevenson so for four. Leadoff hitter for the balls. Got a pinch hitter, I think. It is. So Blake Burke will hit. De La Salle High School product in California. Just a little bit short of the witching hour. Tony Vitello says, hey, Blake, grab a bat. you got to <laughs> right. see this slider from Nixon. <laughs> that is the challenge of uh, playing in a tournament like this. You sit around. Of course, both of these teams had to wait an extra hour and a half in between game number two that went long, extra innings. And then late into the night, uh, this Friday evening game that started was supposed to start at 7.00. We kicked it off at 8.35. 8.35. Yeah, it's been a long day for both these teams. Two balls, two strikes to the pinch hitter, Burke. Burke gave able to get a piece of that slider to chop it back to the screen. So tomorrow our schedule, the first game set for 11.05. It'll be Oklahoma, UCLA. Two teams looking for their first win of this college classic. Tennessee will be back for the 305 game against Baylor. Why well, that one hit him? If you had the over on hit by pitches today, you're cashing out a winner. <laughs> exactly right. It's got to be like the fifth, right? There's a two on Gilbert. David Pierce is out for an explanation. I'm not sure if he thought maybe hit the bat or not, but regardless. Either that or did Burke stick his hand out. I 
Ethan Payne is going to run. Well, they're going to. Umpire's going to come together on this one as well, and you can challenge that play. That's exactly what's going to happen. Well, so, Longhorns have challenged the hit by pitch on Blake Burke. Take a closer look and see if he stuck his hand out there. Hard one had kind of an interesting take on it. Yeah, did he stick his arm out? I'd be able to make that argument. He's also striding a bit into that pitch. Yeah, he's kind of riding into it a little bit, and the hands drop. <laughs> I think that might be a pretty telling replay. Yeah. Usually the hands don't drop into the zone like that, so. It was not a natural baseball swing movement. But you also don't want to stick your hand onto a, a pitch not coming really. at 90 miles an hour. <laughs> I mean, look at his stance right there. That's yeah. a unique setup. You see Ardwan moving in to catch the ball, so it definitely wasn't a strike. Curious to see what they might come up with here. This is probably the angle that might be a little more telling than others. How about that ball nearly being caught, though, by yeah. Ardwan? Played the ricochet. Oh, it does come off his knuckles. Definitely makes contact with his hand. Great camera work there for us to be able to see that. And I think that's the only, the only argument that Texas may have is did he, did he intentionally put his hands out into the zone to, you know, to get hit? What say you after seeing that replay? Yeah, I, I think it, it'd be tough to call that. I mean, it's, you get down to the motivation no of the hitter, right? Yep. So it's yeah. Sometimes hitters can get fooled on a pitch and you know, turn into one and. Yeah, I think this is going to stand. It, Burke uh, gets first base, and there's been a pinch runner for him already stationed there. Tennessee needs base runners. They're down to their final two outs, trailing by five runs. This conversation has been a lengthy one. I mentioned Tennessee will be back for the middle game yesterday against Baylor or tomorrow on Saturday. Texas LSU, of course, the nightcap tomorrow night. We might hit Saturday before this <laughs> replay in. <laughs> it, uh, the, it's starting to thin out here in the stands as well. So I think the fans have figured out uh, you got Aaron Nix on the mound. And I feel like the suspense has been ratcheted up with this weight. <laughs> it has been. You feel like when they're taking this long, it's. Uh, Something's going to happen here that uh, maybe we're, we're not expecting, I'm guessing. And the discussion continues. Right now, it's plate umpire Michael Durantis who has the headset on. We've seen his colleague already had this headset on earlier in this review. Umpires are upstairs helping out with the review. Now a further discussion here. The umpires are going to get back together. <laughs> yes, they are. This is going to take the quartet of umpires. Yeah, this is where, you know, I know you, you obviously the crew is trying to get the call right, but this is the part of the game that you, you just hate because it slows everything down and the you know, pitcher is trying to stay loose. And of course, the I do have a feeling that after this call is made, it's not going to be the end of the conversation. And the batter is going to be out. Now they pointed to the first baseman, uh, the pinch runner at first base. Burke's already come out of the game. Tony Vitello wants an explanation. So they called a strike on the two strike pitch rather than a hit by pitch. So not only does the hit by pitch come off the board, it's an out. If you've got that in your baseball bingo card tonight, <laughs> that's right. You win the you jackpot. Win. You win. Yeah, we've seen some odd things, but uh, you know, that one, it, you know, we couldn't really tell from the angle we had that was that pitch a strike. And obviously, the see the ball off the hitter's knuckles. 
If they get the strike call, and that'll go down as a, as a strikeout for Aaron Nixon. He'll take it. And Lipsius is the final chance right now for Tennessee. So instead of getting a base runner with one out, base is empty, two gone, and one more chance for the Vols. Lipsius has had a rough night. 0 for 4. He struck out three times, and I don't think he's been the beneficiary of some borderline calls going in his favor. Now down to one strike. Pretty big shift employed right here by the Longhorns. Faltini, the only infielder on the left side of the diamond. Volunteers again down to their final strike and out. A couple of minutes shy of midnight. Tennessee trying to continue this game. Well, Nick's not pitching into the shift either. He's throwing pitches outside. Great fastballs point. away. Yep. He comes back with a slider here. The 2-2. Two -two. And Lipsy is able to serve it foul and stay alive. Ball game over. And the number one team in the nation has improved to 10-0 as Texas takes down Tennessee 7-2. Good ball game tonight, Pat. Really a good opening three games here in day one of the college classic. Yeah, it really has been. And you look at the, the starting pitching today was outstanding all the way around. Pete Hansen and picks up the win for the Longhorns. And tip of the hat to Chase Burns. Had an outstanding outing for Tennessee. Kept him in the game and came down to the bullpens and Texas wins it. Busy day of baseball coming up tomorrow. We're we'll our first game. We'll be at Minute Maid, 11.05 a.m. Central Time, Oklahoma, UCLA. It is Baylor, Tennessee in the middle game. And the nightcap will be a fun one, Texas and LSU. That'll do it today from Minute Maid Park. We're going to send you off soon to Colorado College Hockey. So for Pat Combs and our entire crew, I'm Brett Dolan thanking you for watching. LSU had the walk-off in game two. The Longhorns take down the Volunteers. 7-2. So long and good night from Minute Maid Park, the Shriners Hospitals for Children College Classic. Spring training is back in the Palm Beaches this spring. Experience Astros baseball, plus the best beaches, dining, and entertainment after the game. There's nothing better than Astros spring ball in sunny Florida. For tickets and more, visit astros.com slash spring to book your trip. Plan your visit now to the spring training home of the Houston Astros. The Palm Beaches. Watch me. Watch me roam. Discover. Explore. The forest is quiet. The river will roll. One slip by the fire is all it took. But they made my arm better. Just take a look. Under moon and stars. That's where I love to stay. Let's go play in the woods. I'll show you the way. Watch me. The place to turn for any bird. Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Watch me. Watch me pirouette with style and grace. An open floor of inspiration. This is my place. Five positions to start, leotard and tights. A story through movement under music and lights. Straight and tall, they promised I'd stand. I'm a ballerina who twirls like the blades of a fan. Watch me. Innovative scoliosis treatment at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. I know my old spice long-lasting sense anywhere. That's me, Mr. Cole. Oh. Uh. Mm. Let's talk about a raise.